uh, they're uh, Jewish or whatever. Well, the beauty of it is if you read Donnie Brasco, the first crime family he busted was the Chicago crime family. And their counterpart was the Milwaukee crime family. And their big business was slot machines, cigarette machines, all those type of machines. Donnie Brasco took them down. They just didn't talk about it in the movie. Right. So the first time I met, went to Milwaukee, people were like, nah, bro, don't go over there. And he go around the corner to Italianville. And there was this place in 1998 that had meatball heroes for $2. Man. It was a mafia joint to the hill. It smelled like cheese. And <laughs> three little fat guys back there taking book. But man, they just made meatballs all day and put them on bread with a little mozzarella. I'm starting to get hungry. It. Oh my God, yeah. We'll order some fucking meatball heroes in an hour from... You, you always get, say we're gonna get meatball heroes, but we never get meatball. We never get nothing. Yeah, but he's talking about in Milwaukee. Start the goddamn show. You don't get no meatball heroes. You didn't go back to the gym. Should have went to the gym, dude. Twenty eight years old, fucking around. Yeah, no, no, I'm gonna read the ads. Oh, I'm sorry. You said we gotta deal with. You said get it Sneak started. Preview, I'm, I'm sorry. All right, let's do this. We ready? Yeah, we're going. Oh, we've been going. We, when you that meatball thing, we've been going. What the fuck is wrong with you? You need to tell me. The podcast has started. The podcast is started. That's what you're trying to tell me. Well, guess what? It's Monday, May 8th, and Church of What's Happening Now is in the motherfucking house. For starters, we want to give a shout out. What is me undies? Oh, just sorry. Seriously soft, feel good underwears delivered right to your door. So go ahead and revamp your underwear drawer. You deserve it. Again, this podcast is brought to you by MeUndies.com. Right now, go to MeUndies.com slash Joey. MeUndies.com slash Joey. And get 20% off your first pair. Number two, one of the best food companies out there, Blue Apron. Number one with fresh ingredients and recipe delivery service in the country. They deliver fresh seasonal food right to your door and you can cook it in 30 minutes or less. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free and free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash joey again blueapron.com slash joey and i want to welcome a company to the church that is one of the best companies out there because you don't have to leave the house and i'm talking about stamps.com these days you can get practically everything on demand like our podcast listen whenever you want and when it's convenient to you why go to the post office to stand on line and get breathed on by the bunch of people. Forget that. Go to stamps.com. Click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Joey. That's stamps.com. Enter Joey, and I'm going to give you a four-week trial. Includes postage and a digital scale. That's how I'm rolling on the church of what's happening now. Yeah. Kick that mule, Lee. Oh, shit. When it couldn't get any better. Upstairs at Eric's, fucking Yaz. This is Quaalude music right here. You put the you put the music on. You eat the Quaalude. You gave the girl the Gorilla Biscuit. By the end of the song, you're both naked, and she's telling you she's got a boyfriend. What are you gonna do? Here we go. Monday, May eighth. The church of what's happening now. Here we get what? What'd you say? <clears throat> Do I dress for every situation? Moving through the doorway of a nation. What's happening, you beautiful motherfuckers? Welcome to Podcastville. Uncle Joey here, the church of what's happening now. My main man in studio, Matt Full Charge, Full Tron. What's up? And my little brother who is fucked up tonight <laughs> on some of the best weed I've gotten all year, my main man, Mr. Lee Syatt. I don't even know where you get bottles with no label. I think you don't that's need a- to know. Oh my I get God. the call, a voice they hang up on me, I'm they give me an address, I show up, I give them an envelope, they give me an envelope. I don't ask questions. That's the beauty about Joey Diaz. Why well, ask questions? I don't care who raised it, I don't care what you put in it. As long as I see the devil for 10 minutes, I'm I, good. I care. If I, I care. Where, like, where, you it, going? where it, it, are you going tonight? Where the fuck are you going? <laughs> we're here. I, I, we're, we're here for the right night, here. man. You're sitting, behind, you're sitting behind fucking Led Zeppelin 2 and Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. Where the fuck are you going? Nowhere, I guess. Geez. Thank you for watching uh, and supporting me on Superior Donuts. Congratulations, man. It was this fucking spoon deal. Whatever. It's no genius. I'm proud a of you. A friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. That's what happens when you live here for 20 years. <laughs> Every once in a while... 
one day you do something you don't really want to do. It doesn't pay you a lot of money, but you're committed to it and you do it and something good comes to you one day. And Absolutely. once in a while somebody calls you with a job and you're like, really, man? Thank you. And people call you with jobs all the time. But some jobs are bigger. Sometimes people call you and want you to work three days on a YouTube project for three days for free. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you take those and you take everything that comes at you and eventually somebody calls you with a fucking job that you go, Jesus Christ, this is a fucking job. You yeah. Know? It's mine. To, I still had an audition, but it was mine to lose. Right. You know what I'm saying? It I hear you. Deals, yeah. So. Now, I know you have an agent. Um but are there like are there like acting gigs online like how you apply to jobs online can you just sub submit yourself 17 years ago when actors access around there i would pay the 69 dollars a year i'd i'd and i'd have my wife scan my headshots three or four headshots and i'd sit there every night and look through jobs and i'll tell you what i booked on there are you ready ready cold case first step of the first year all right. Fucking cold case. Yeah. And I booked a guest star off Showfax. I booked Law & Order SVU. Damn. From Showfax. I booked a movie, which I got fired from, in Jamaica on Showfax. So I used to hustle on Showfax. When you get fired in Jamaica, is it tough to get the plane ticket back? Or no, you, the plane was a round trip ticket. Oh, okay. It was a round trip yeah. ticket. It was one of those fucking, they paid for it with miles. So you're the last one to get on the plane. Yeah. And, you're the last one to get your luggage, and your fucking luggage is wet. Like, it was one of those fucking deals. Right. I had to land in Miami and wait for 10 hours for a connecting flight. You know, it was one of those deals. Right. So I got myself out of it real quick, but uh, I ended up suing them. Yeah. Fuck yeah, and then I settled it out of court. Because I did the paperwork, and the Screen Actors Guild, who's supposed to represent you, sued them for the money they owed me, which was two weeks of work. It wasn't right. a lot of money. Right. The point, I did the movie. The movie was going to be a disaster. Mm -hmm. I knew this going in, but it was I would get paid before Christmas. Yeah. And my wife would get a, a it was way before I was married. She would yeah. get a present and we'd get a few lobster tails. And Worth it. And eat at the house, you know. So it meant the world to me to get this <clears> job. When I got fired, I still put it together, but I tried to sue him. Let's, I think it was two weeks to 1200 a week. So I sued him for 2400 bucks. Yeah. All right, I'm waiting for my 2400. I'm waiting for a small 24 for a year. <laughs> Finally, I bump into somebody and I tell him the story, a SAG rep. And they tell me to call him on Monday. And I call him. And he looks into it. He goes, You know why they haven't paid you? Because SAG billed them for $10,000. Oh. SAG said, I want $400 charge for this, $2,000 for firing him because it was his fault. So he was getting sued by SAG. Okay. I had a clear case, I had right. a, a strong case yeah. across the board. So I called the guy, like, again, two weeks before Christmas. And I go, he goes, they won't let me release the movie, and they won't give me back my bond unless I settle with you. Uh -huh. I go, I'm not here to rob you. Just give me what you owe me. I gave him my bank account. He told me to be there in the morning. He put it in, and I dropped the claim. Nice. And that was it. Only took a year. The movie never got released. Not even on YouTube? Never saw the light of day. Which I knew. Club Paradise 2. Yeah, it was just a fucking disaster. What's happening in your world, beautiful? Me? I'm going on the road with you this week. This is going on with me. You were on the road for like nine fucking months. Uh, no, it was two months. You switch with Ari. Ari moves back. Then you're oh, in this yeah, house yeah, taking yeah. showers. I switched. You're like uh, two fucking cats. I switched with Ari Shafir last okay. year. Which is cool as shit. That was great. Cool as shit. He's such a great guy. I'm yeah. happy to have him back. He sounds good. And you know, oh yeah, so when did he get back in touch with everybody? Like, what's going on with that? You know, he called me. Yeah. He's my brother, and he called me, and he goes, listen, this is what's going on. And he told me like a man mid-December. I had heard rumblings about it. Yeah. But I thought it was bullshit. I had heard rumblings about it, because we share the same agent, so it was bullshit. Uh -huh. I just called bullshit. I, he ain't going to go. You know? Right. And then he called me and he goes, I'm going. I need to see the world. I need to yeah. experience stuff and write jokes. And listen, if I was single, I'd disappear out of here right. for weeks. I'd take a lead and go to Miami for five fucking days and interview people. And Yeah, you, know, you told me about that in Nyack, and it made me feel like. like I wanted to do that. What do you mean? Like, I just felt great that like even he got to go to, and do it. Like, it was just such an escape. I was like, because I was so exhausted from the road. I was like, oh, somebody's getting out of it for a little bit. Like, it's cool. That sounded good to me. 
the, yeah. I, I have this fantasy ever since we we got Lyft as as a, a sponsor. I have this fantasy of just like lifting and driving across America, like just from city to city as a driver. I've done that. And Joe's just, done that, and just seeing the city, you seeing like working in each city and like getting to live there for a couple of weeks. Like I, I don't know, I don't know if you could like financially like afford hotels every night. Maybe you'd have to find like someone to crash with, mm-hmm. but. So I'm like that's just like it's not like a, a an aspiration of mine. It's just like a fantasy I have sometimes. Right. Well, you guys, you guys don't have anything like that. Like anything. Like well, anything. we've done it so much, kind of. You want me to tell you something, man? I I I, I love doing comedy, and if I had to get the top three things I like about doing comedy, one was the journey, the other one was the people. But you want me to tell you what the other one was? What's that? I know every nook and can- cranny in this fucking country. You got homes away from home. Oh, I've been there. Do you Me know too. What I'm saying? Like, I, I do. don't remember a lot of things. Right. But I've been to every nook and cranny. Remember when you start comedy, you work at hell holes. Yeah. So I started in Denver. So I would fucking go to these towns that you never even heard of. Yeah. Like population 2000. Mm hmm. I knew people who booked rooms in all those type of towns. Yeah. And you drive in and see if they had a gas station. A laundromat and a supermarket and a post office. And the police department was like two doors, you know, like, and you go, how do these people live? It's a different way of life. We were talking about triple runs the other day, which is mm-hmm. a run that you do when you first start. Right. And they really show you the discipline of the road and how it works and blah, 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 and getting up early and getting drunk and how to survive on $50 a night. Teaches yeah. you a lot. But uh, the one thing about triple runs is that. He used to have this room in Craig, Colorado. He had like eight weeks of work. Potato run one, potato run two. Yeah. Uh, Missoula run one, Missoula run two. That means he had two clubs in the same city. He was right. a hustler, David Tribble. You got to give him to that. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go on a limb here. I wouldn't be here right now without David Tribble because David Tribble was the fundamentals of comedy. I learned it from Doug Stanhope. Right. When I heard yeah. Doug Stanhope lived on a David Tribble tour, yeah. I immediately went on a Dave Tribble tour. You do what winners are doing. Right. And you learn a lot. You learn how to work yourself out of mm-hmm. holes in those rooms. Mm-hmm. You know what it's like to go to Idaho on Tuesday night to a room. When when you get there, they go, oh, it doesn't say anything. You can't curse. There's Mormons in the room. Yeah. It's a Mormon bar. And you have to switch up your game. You got to switch up your fucking audibles and shit. And they're not letting you call it, oh, maybe I'll do 45 tonight. No. They want you to do an hour. Yeah, it's it's great, yeah. guys. It's a discipline. And then you got to get back to your hotel room. So here you are, a star in a city that is fucking small. And there's always a waitress that's got drugs or a guy and his girlfriend want to bring you over for you to bang the girlfriend and him to watch. I mean, That's the, a big thing on triple runs. They're the weirdest situations. Triple runs are filth. They're filth because when you go to that city, you're you're a fucking movie star to them. It's fucking crazy, Lee. Do you think those people go every week? Yeah. Yeah. That's the they have nothing else to do on Wednesday night. And then Friday night they have a live band and Saturday they have a live band. And I'm not putting that lifestyle down by any means. It sounds great. But it's a complete different lifestyle. Yeah. And yeah, I'm not Johnny International. I can't sit here with you guys and talk about the Vatican. And I talk, can't talk to you guys about going to Brazil and to the jungles of ayahuasca. But let me tell you something. As a fucking immigrant, I really learned what this country was about by going to all these cities. Right. I could tell you more about the economy right now today from me going to these cities. I learned that much. And when I go to Charlotte and I see construction. In Utah this week, I counted four or five fucking cranes. Right. You know, in Salt Lake City. That's what I look for. I look for cranes. Yeah. I look for movement on the streets. There's a lot of cities you go to that they're, they're quiet. And every city has a personality. And I've got to see all those personalities. Yeah. And I'm really happy about that. Me you too. Know? Snake River, North Dakota. <laughs> I didn't get high for five days on this triple run. Yeah. What kind of high? Like anything. Heroin or I was what? just smoking dope okay. on the road. I was right. getting shitty weed all throughout fucking northern part of the country. I was getting brown weed. Right. And I finally get to Snake River or one of those Dakotas on a Friday night, and I'm hungry, and they go, you get 50% off at the restaurant downstairs in the hotel. <laughs> and I get to the hotel, and I'm about to pass out. I look in the back, and there's one lonely Mexican in the kitchen. That was my only hope. Uh-huh. I made eye contact with him. He came over. We started talking in Spanish. I asked him where the shit was if he had a cousin who sold coke. Yeah. He goes, I got a cousin who sells bombs. You know what I'm saying? I got a cousin <laughs> who sells the shit that killed right. Pablo Escobar. He's right. Pablo Escobar's nephew. He gave me a handful of blow for like 40 bucks in Snake uh-huh. River. You know, you just learned all these 
crazy things like people. I, I I went to towns where people would go. So what hotel are you staying at? And you're like, no, I'm not. I'm gonna sleep in my car. Don't be foolish. Stay in our living room. And you're like, what? <laughs> you don't know who I am. I could rob you in the <laughs> exactly. middle of the night. But from that love, it mm-hmm. makes you you like, wow, people are so cool. When you wake up and they made your breakfast. And they want to drive you and show you where the Kmart is. You can buy new T-shirts. Yeah, it's really fucking crazy. It's really fucking crazy. You see the beauty of people. You see the shittiness of people. I was yeah. in Buffalo one time. I'm standing there, and this black guy's running at me. I'm eating a fucking McDonald's egg McMuffin. Yeah, I got the potato pet cake. Right, and I got the Coca Cola in those days. It's summer of '98. It's uh-huh. winter of '98. Mm-hmm. This was like my third time in Buffalo. I, I did everything on a bus then. Okay, all my business was done on a bus. Greyhound. Mm-hmm. I would fly to Manhattan, base myself out of Jersey, and take buses. Right, uh, Myrtle Beach, D.C., Philly, fucking Buffalo, Syracuse. I might have done that before. How long is the bus ride to Florida? That's a long one. That's like close. I never to- took that one. I think it's close to 20 hours. <clears throat> I took a train from Miami to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Oh, one of the South worst Carolina. experiences of my life. Never took a train again. Which they, w- they bang you on each fucking level. They're like fucking filthy animals. They're, they're more like, expensive than planes. Like It, it costs like more to do cops. Amtrak than it does to Oh, fly. my God. They bang you at the station. Then you get on and you got a chair. What happened to the room? Every movie you watch, everybody's got a room. They're sleeping. No, that the costs Beatles more. are there. Yeah, the Beatles are there. Then you go in. That costs more money. How much more? 200 Okay. So now I'm up to... Yeah, the ticket was sixty nine fifty. You're jumping up and down. You're know, Like I said, because sometimes you, you would work as a feature. You get 400 bucks. Right. I snorted 200 Yeah. I got 200 for the journey. <laughs> I could take the flight for 189 and fly yeah. with a nickel and got to shoplift water at the airport. Yeah. Or, and I got to get somebody to drive me, like a feature act or the MC. I got to give them a small nickel or a joint. Yeah. And then... I said, fuck it, the train is 69 bucks. I save 100 I get there with a yardstick in my pocket. Yeah. I go out, I buy a Jeebo, a blow. Oh, my God. For the, they mugged me. I took for the two, train ride? Fuck yeah. I took two, no, no, no. I didn't have Coke for the train ride. I had like two joints. <laughs> and I would get off and smoke the joints and get back on the train, <laughs> fucked up, and put my little Walkman on. And yeah. then these motherfuckers, you know, I'm like, I want to eat. And like when it costs twenty four dollars, what do you mean it costs twenty four dollars? Because you got to buy the whole menu. What if I just want a cup of fucking noodle soup? Right. Because they had like chicken noodle soup with a bunch of crackers. That'll fill you good for three dollars. Sure. For the small three dollars, no, they wanted twenty four for the whole fucking meal. Well, because you probably went to like because I've ridden it. They have a first class and then they have like a general boarding. Like it, it's crazy that I've never even sat like that in a restaurant. I like I, I went to like the food cart that has microwave pizzas and t- terrible food. <laughs> no, no, after that fucking train ride. And I was getting off, getting stoned. But the buses are the shit. Greyhound is really the shit. Grey- if- Greyhound is like traveling abroad. abroad. What? When wow. you get to the bus station, you don't know who you're going to run into. You don't know who you're going to sit next to. You got an idea. And if they- Yeah, it's got to be somebody <laughs> who mugs somebody. It's got to be somebody who's on the loose. Somebody it's that gotta- needed to pay cash. Yeah, somebody who... Uh, you know, owe somebody money for booking and is leaving town. Right. Women who are leaving their husbands because they got hit in the head with a bat the night before and they got a fucking, they got a swami hat on. Don't they put like prisoners at like who are like getting released from jail on buses? Yeah. You have no fucking idea the adventures I've had on buses. I had so many adventures I've forgotten on. And I had, listen, you know me, I don't like traffic. Yeah. I would get on a bus from 97 to 2002. Yeah. Fuck yeah! I would right. take a bus, Jack. I heard Say, a guy on a bus like, uh, like he was he was fighting that like capitalism was the best like form of government when clearly it just had not worked out for him. <laughs> it's fucking weird, dude. I'm like, dude, communism will work better for you, dude. Come on. No, people neglect the buses, and it's funny they have a bus station around the corner here in Magnolia, and from time to time, pass by there at night. And you'll see creepy people oh, yeah. by the bus station. That means they have no money. Some people don't even want to take the bus. They just want to sleep there. No, no. That bus station, you can't sleep there. No? No, 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 no. That motherfucker closes at 6. Oh, okay. There ain't no future in there. There's nothing but darkness and rats over there. When I- but when the bus drops you off at 11. But if you got money, you can walk half a block and go to NoHo Diner. Right. That's why NoHo Diner is dangerous at night. Because those bus people over there lurking, looking for a dime, a quarter, <laughs> those are bus me a people cup there. of coffee. Remember the one night we were there, we threw cigarettes away, and the guy picked them up and smoked them? He was a bus creature from over from the fucking Greyhound over there. 
were you there the night that like the homeless kid sat down next to me or i think i might have been on the phone with you like whenever i'm in that situation they come over and like want to borrow my phone he want me to like drop him off at a motel six in van nuys somewhere i always get approached for that stuff it's fucking crazy the people that come up to i you. sat next to two homeless guys on a plane one time this is a true story like they were mules or something they smelled bad they were dirty as fuck one guy tried to smoke on the plane like they were insane they were fucking homeless and then a week later i actually saw the guy walking down sunset boulevard i was like what's their fucking story man how do they have money to fly from chicago to la when they're clearly fucking homeless they had no teeth or anything Maybe like what the fuck they were like they were running drugs or something well no, right? no 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 there's a thing here where they put you on a plane or they put you on a bus ticket they give you a bus ticket oh really LA. there's something here there's a program because i heard about it on the news where something if you're homeless they'll send you back to your this you have to do some paperwork and uh-huh. they'll give you a bus ticket out maybe in chicago they fly you out first class these dudes are clearly homeless men I like the one guy was sitting in my seat. I'm like, you're in my seat, and they like I separated the two of them. And then one of them's like, I wouldn't sit there. He's like, I just wiped feces all over the fucking chair. What? Like they were fucking. You got this crazy. And Tasha, Daniel Tasha's on the other side of me, going ah, just laughing at me for like the fucking bad luck I had. And he, he's sitting by the exit window. He goes, if I open this up, do you think we'll all die? I'm like, yes. Like I should have told the fucking air marshal. Yeah, why do you... There's feces on your chair. What are you talking about? Did you just wipe it off? How long ago was this? This was, I don't know, like six, seven years ago? Maybe fucking eight? You know those those, those professional homeless people? Yeah. That have a scam. So what is the scam? Okay, the old scam, twenty. the scam I fucking heard about, my jaw dropped, but I had an idea, and then I got locked up. And I got locked up in November in Boulder. Uh Uh-huh. Now, there was an article in Boulder in 19, before I got locked up, I read this thing that four out of five jails, like four out of five inmates surveyed in Colorado said that Boulder County Jail was the best jail in Colorado. Okay. So when you're homeless in Boulder, the reason why it was so good, when I got arrested in Boulder, I couldn't believe it. (laughs) It was like the scene in Goodfellas where you're cooking steaks and shit. Close to it. (laughs) Close to it, with no gangsters. Close to it. Like, okay. it was one of the most enjoyable months of my life, looking back at and it. And everyone right had, like, red hair? Oh, what? Everybody was laid back. There were yeah. a couple killers in there. That you were in general population. Okay. But there were levels. Okay? So, like, level one, you went to bed at 10, and you had regular channels. Two, four, seven, and fucking fuck, uh, Fox. They gave you TV? Okay. Yeah. Not in your room. <laughs> But you had you could wear your own clothes if uh-huh. your family brought you clothes. Really? You could wear your own clothes. You don't have to wear fucking greens. And they gave you cigarettes. What? They gave you the roll ones. Uh-huh. What's that called? Those pouches with the roll ones? Filterless, paper. yeah. Roll, yeah. There's roll a name for those. Yeah. They give you those. Yeah. They'd feed you. They'd give you dental. Like the third day in Boulder County Jail, you'd go to the dentist. He's like, you got nine that. cavities. You're ready to go. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. You know, you're getting fucking 850 an hour. You just graduated from the academy yourself. I'm going to let you drill in my fucking right. teeth. Fuck you. Yeah. And that was bullshit because the day I got arrested, the day I kidnapped Vela, I went to the dentist that morning. Uh huh. I went to the dentist mm-hmm. and they gave me laughing gas. And so my defense was like, tell them that you took the laughing gas. And I didn't do it. And I'm stupid because somebody sent me an article after I told the story before. Yeah. But yeah, Boulder County Jail was voted amongst fucking invicts the best jail in the state so the scam was that people would fly to boulder in the (laughs) in the winter they would bust the boulder or hitchhike to boulder and they would get arrested there so they would be in jail for the winter right i just it was a scam they knew exactly what to do yeah that would keep them because then they go and the guy would can you make bail no okay 180 days (laughs) see ya (laughs) So it, it was fucking crazy. Just for what, like shoplifting or something. Yeah. Like that? So it was. They got showers. They got yeah. free cigarettes. They got yeah. cable TV. Sounds great. And it was a, if you were nonviolent like me. See, my crime was on the fence. Uh-huh. So I could only get up to a, a certain level. But the dude liked me. Mm-hmm. So they put me up to level red or something. Which in those days was midnight, cable TV, Monday night football. They got pizza. Wow. That's what big in the joint. I could Monday get some night of that football. prison right now. Dog, let me tell you. No, it was, it was a county jail. Yeah. It was like a fucking party. And that county, 
on Monday nights, they had like the frozen Tostino pizzas. Yeah. But when you're in county jail, that's a fucking party with Kool-Aid, with no I'm sugar in it, it, with light with the sugar, watered down like a motherfucker. Yeah. For Monday Night Football, I was locked up when Bo Jackson went through fucking... Uh, what sport? Monday Night Football. Yeah. You're fucked. Bo Jack. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. You, well, no, go ahead. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Bo Jackson went through <laughs> the dude I did the longest yard with. Like, we were all in there. Okay. We played for the Raiders. Oh, and it was uh, the Raiders against the, the Seahawks. The linebacker? Yeah, Brian Bosworth. And he fucking ran over him. Mm-hmm. You know, you never seen so many black dudes jumping up and down in Boulder <laughs> and shit. I, I, and I was in Boulder for a month. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> so by the first week, I was in Level Red talking shit. Uh-huh. And you're in there with other guys, and they tell you to shut your fucking mouth. Okay. Because those are the same guys that you go to court, and they're like, well, you said that you mugged them. And you're like, no, you didn't. Hold on. Uh, and that dude you were sitting next to in the cell, he's a cop. Uh-huh. And all these people in there yakking, I wouldn't say nothing. They, people would ask me questions. You know, they want to see your paperwork. You right. need to see my paperwork, bro. You need to see my fucking paperwork. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. I was watching uh, about the homeless people. I was watching uh, Lock Up on Netflix, and they had this guy. I forget. I think it was New Jersey. Had 1,088 arrests. Yeah. And he was just an alcoholic and meth abuser. And they said one time the shortest he was out once was four hours. He was detoxing and didn't want to leave, so he sat in front of the intake door until they arrested him. And he, like, a, a thousand arrests. Listen, man, some people, once they're institutionalized, the life becomes too real. Life becomes too real. Mm-hmm. It, it, I, w- I was locked up for a short amount of time. And I got to tell you something. That first month outside yeah. was fucking surreal. I bet. It's a weird transition. The first transition, because I spent a month in county, uh-huh. and everybody around me knew. The town, Boulder is a big town, but it's a small town. The address came out in the papers. My name came out in the papers where I worked. Mm-hmm. So people looked at me different. I tried to go back to the same job, and they were like, we don't think so. We're not firing you, but we think you should take a breather. Right. So one of the managers there took a job in Longmont, and he hired me. And I was so cracked. At that time, I could sell... 12 to 15 cars just being me. Right. I went there for a month. I blanked, guys. Really? I was cracked. Huh. I was cracked. I was cracked. I was looking at fucking nine years. What do you, what do you think if you done, had done like nine years and technology had changed? Like, what do you what do you think happens when you do 20 years and you go in in, 1990, in 1990 and come out 2010 and have I don't even want to think of that. cell phones? and That's crazy. I don't even want to think of that. Like, that. that's got to be... You go insane. Yeah. You know, if somebody showed me Google or some porn site or something, <laughs> and I did 20 fucking years, my brain would blow up. Yeah. Guess what? You don't have to fucking uh, go to the mall no more for pants. What are you talking about? What size are you? 32, 34. Come on, let's go on Amazon. What's Amazon? Let me show you. <laughs> right. And I belong to Amazon. I signed up for the special program. I get 24-hour delivery. Right. And the next day, there's a box at your door with your clothes and your toothpaste. People couldn't handle it. No, I can't handle I could, it. I can barely handle it. And I've lived through it. You know? Right. That's what the beauty is, that that some technology is a little too too much, you know? Yeah. And it has destroyed certain things. You know, if you read Keith Richards' book, he talks a lot about how that nobody makes live albums no more. Right. They forgot. Mm-hmm. They technologically, so they put so much technology into it that they missed the whole fucking game. Right. You know? Did you see that article? I, mean, I think we might have even talked about it before, about that restaurant owner who looked at their security camera footage and were, like they were getting a lot of complaints about the food. And it used to be great. Nothing changed. And they found that people were spending like an hour longer because they were looking on the taking pictures on their phone, and the food was getting cold. Yeah, I read that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's an, it's an it's a old article, two or three. They years. had to get their pictures taken. They had to get the pictures taken, eating their fancy meal. Right. Yeah. It was just slowed the whole shit down. Yeah. And then I don't know if you if you saw, but in the New York Post this weekend there was an article about how like the millennials are like the laziest generation. Like they don't go out anymore. They don't really drink. The whole Netflix thing that you hate is what they do, and it was a it was a like they spend less money on alcohol than any than ever before. They don't really binge on it. It's it was you know, I was telling They're somebody officially the other pussies day. then is what you're saying. You, yeah, you pretty know, much. But you know what the millennials like? What's that? Comedy. They sure do. And they go out to comedy and they don't drink and they don't stay out and they're not drug addicts like we were. <laughs> 
<laughs> you understand this me? And true. there's nothing wrong with that. Right. That's what they're into. Right, yeah. You know, it's it's last week I went back after the fucking show and I've talked about this a thousand times. And it bothers the fuck out of a guy like me. I, I like comedy. I respect comedy. Comedy gave me my life. Mm-hmm. Comedy took me out of a fucking hole, you know, and I'm a Harold Ramis type of guy. Like when, yeah. when I saw Harold Ramis' work, I laughed my fucking ass off. Last night, guys, I was in my room at 10.30 on my couch with ice on my knees. My wife was in bed, and I was watching an episode of The Honeymooners that I watched 500 times. Right. And by It started at 10.30, and by 10.45, I had to turn it off because I was laughing and crying at the same time. <laughs> right. Crying about that. At one time, I would watch this in my mother's house. Uh-huh. Like, I was a kid, and I would right. watch this, and I'd pick up the phone and call you. Right. Who had also seen this episode ten times before, mm-hmm. and we'd sit there like two fags for a half hour, <laughs> either saying the right. lines, like, yeah. I would go, okay, I'm Norton, fuck you. You were Norton the other night, right. fuck this. Because I would know what night Norton shined, yeah, yeah, and you yeah. would know what night sure. shined, you know? You know what to pick. I mean, that's how much of a fucking oh. comedy fag I was at that right. age. Like, I was hooked on Gleason. Norton, The Odd Couple, and then we had a lineup of death. We had the Benny Hill Show at 10.30. Yeah. We had The Honeymooners, The Odd Couple, Sanford and Son, Dude. and The Twilight Zone. When you're in high school, that's murder. That's, that's murder as HBO Row. Sunday right there. That's fucking... That's off the hook. That was murder as Row. But as a comedy guy, like, I didn't know I was going to be a comedian. You think I fucking knew I wanted to do comedy? I was just a fan of it. Mm-hmm. Like, I was enamored with it. Like, I, if I saw you, I would go to just watch Sam for the Sun tonight, and you'd go, no. And I'd break the whole episode down to you. Yeah. The timing, the words. Like, I fucking live for that shit. Yeah. So last night, there's a scene where it opens up with Alice and talking to some young girl, and the girl says, it's 14. And the girl's going roller skating, and the guy's going to pick her up, and she <laughs> yeah. doesn't want her father to meet the guy, so can the guy right. pick her up there? So the girl leaves. Ralph comes home from a hard day's work, and she starts telling Ralph that, why don't they go out and dance and go roller skating? Right. And Ralph's like, what, are you crazy or something? And he starts yelling and screaming. <laughs> yeah. And then Norton comes in. <laughs> but on the way out, she goes, you know, Ralph, you're so icky. And he looks, and he goes, icky? And all of a sudden, he's sitting there, and Norton comes in, and he looks at Norton, and he goes, Norton, Alice just called him Icky. What does Icky mean? And Norton looks at him, and he goes, it must mean fat. <laughs> <laughs> I busted out right there. Yeah. Then there's a fucking scene that Ralph agrees, he, Alice makes him feel terrible, and Ralph agrees <laughs> to go out dancing with her. Uh-huh. So he, he hires Norton to teach him how to dance. <laughs> he puts the whole fucking suit on Ralph with the jacket, the hat. He's a beep. You know, he's saying all those sayings. Uh, I'll kiss you late. I'm eating the potato. Yeah. 24 skidoo and all this shit. Mm-hmm. And Norton puts this song on, The Hucklebuck. Mm-hmm. Here's a dance you should know. And fucking Norton starts dancing, dog. And there's a scene where he just hits his hands and starts shaking the show. See if you can find it, please, Lisa. I, what should I put in? Honeymooners. Okay. Hucklebuck. There's also a Jerky Boys uh, prank phone call about the Hucklebuck where he called one of the writers How and, and like really fucked with him. How good were the Jerky Boys? I love the Jerky God, Boys. I loved it. The first I sing album. along to them. Why like you, you do the Honeymooners, I say along with the them. The first like the, album, I, used yeah. to, I played it for six months straight really? in my car. I, would, I think that would be too gooey the, for you. Oh, the first Why time. Why do you my dog? The first one when he tells him about the furniture up his ass, he's going to melt wax <laughs> on his balls and all that. <laughs> Get Brett Weir, I said. <laughs> that shit killed me. That was like 94 Mm-hmm. 95 somebody sold us a CD in college and the guy goes he goes uh, he goes I feel bad selling this to you he's like you're gonna be sick of it in two days and I've been listening to it for 20 years alright check this out nonstop check out the motherfucking Hucklebuck look at Norton I've never seen the Hucklebuck look at his ass the whole thing and like seeing Boulder Dam for the first time <laughs> I mean Norton's goofing on the f- Never mind that. What do you think? <laughs> well, uh, Ralph, I guess it's all right. You ain't exactly no ding-dong daddy from Dubas. 
Never mind that. You know, this is comedy 101 in my world. Yeah, yeah, I got the night. It's going to be a big night for Alice and me, and I want to dance correctly. This is a fucking small theater across on Broadway or something, across from an Irish bar, and he would go over there and drink. Look at the fucking record player. This one has the the Hucklebuck. Oh, the Hucklebuck. This is always good for me. So you knew who was going to have the best lines. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you would work it out. Watch Norton. Watch him. Watch him. This is pure class, guys. <laughs> Lee. The dance you should. It's one of those numbers that tells a story. <laughs> that tells a story? <laughs> <laughs> look at him. Look at him go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. He's <laughs> supposed to do this with his wife? <laughs> well, here we go. Wait, wait. Wait till you see this move right here. Watch him. Heat, Jack. That is heat right there. Spanish people couldn't do that in 51. This is fucking... You're supposed to just remember that shit. I can't do that. Listen to the record. Listen to the music. Just do what the lurker says on there on the record there. That's all you gotta do. Get in that groove and be gay. <laughs> All right, boy. There we go. Oh, shit. Doug, I, this is kind of I didn't know it was going to pay off this well. <laughs> this is comedy 101, dog. And look at him. 300 pounds. Look at him. Getting a stand to know at CBS Studios in, in New York City. Oh, Are you fucking dude. kidding me? I love it. Fuck Saturday Night Live. Look, this is Saturday Night Live. Right. I want like a duck. Well, you... It's easy. Just walk like you always do. That's it. dance you should. There was three writers on the show. Look at Norton. Look at him. Look at him. Here we go. Here we go. I got it now, Norton. Look at the timing on this fat fuck. Look at him. Pure brilliance, guys. What are you doing? <laughs> brushing up on a little dance, and that's all. You wanted me to be a dancer, so I'm just brushing up. Well, what is this crazy costume you wear? <laughs> this isn't a costume. This is what all of us cats wear. <laughs> I got it. I got it. I'm hip, ready to go. I'm gone. gone. You're gone, all right. <laughs> Is all of this because of what we talked about last night? This is it. And I'm taking you out. You could kill this. I'm taking. It's like one of the first shows with like a tough broad, huh? You know, know. like was there really a tough broad character like her? She. uh, They had a character in mind, and she auditioned for it. And the agent called, and they said she was too good looking for the role. Mm -hmm. So this chick got up at six in the morning, had a photographer come over, and he took pictures of her. When she first got up in the morning smoking a cigarette with no makeup on, they gave the pictures to Jackie mm-hmm. Gleason. Jackie Gleason knows this is the girl I want. He goes, awesome. This is the girl that was in the office yesterday. He said she was too pretty. So That's she's smart. she's a bad bitch in her mm-hmm. own fucking way. You know what I'm saying? So here mm-hmm. she is standing up against one of the funniest TV actors in fucking history. Right. They only shot like 21 of these episodes. I mean, they shot like 40 something, but these these rare ones from They re ran forever, too, right? They don't. In, in New York City, yeah. they're on every night. The but generations. All- people, listen, people sit around like, this is what you do. The cousins come over Christmas, and you watch that Christmas. That's what you, that, you know, that, the March of the Wooden Soldiers. That's what you've been doing since you were six. Right. Like, that's what your holidays are about. When you live on the East Coast, like you, last night I was watching this and I'm like, how many times have I seen this? It's in so many rap songs, like the references, and it's like, uh, didn't Eddie Murphy have a spoof of it or something too? Yeah. Like it's so fucking uh, it's, it's prevalent. Your, when you're seven, this was on TV from the time I was like eight, and I kept it a secret because I didn't like black and white TV. I hated okay, it as a kid. See, a lot of generations <laughs> just don't. So yeah. I was against black and white TV. The only black and white TV I like was my uh, Dick Van Dyke. Okay. My favorite Martian. I fucking love, but I hated Star Trek. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Star I'm, Trek I'm fucking, was in color? Star right. Trek was oh, the beginning of Star Trek. It was in Spooked black and white. Okay. <laughs> I dug the Twilight Zones, mm-hmm. but you didn't have the balls to tell people. 
when I would spend my summers with my godmother, Raul, her husband and me would stay up all night watching the Twilight Zones and shit. I was like eight and shit. And we'd mm-hmm. stay up and he'd break them down to me and we'd talk about how it affected our lives. It was fucking brilliant. Awesome. But then I started opening up my mind to black and white television. I mm-hmm. under, And by the time I was 10, I was addicted to the Honeymooners. I was in Catholic school, so I couldn't watch it during the week. It came on 11 o'clock. Uh-huh. That's what I hated about Catholic school. That took the Honeymooners out of me until and then Saturday and Sundays, and they didn't play the fucking Honeymooners. Right, right. So I would lose my fucking mind. I would come home on Saturday, and they would talk about it outside Valentin Ferro and, and John Zanotti, and all yeah. these kids would be talking about the fucking Honeymooners, how funny Ralph was, and I'd be fucking... So when I got out of Catholic school, that's the number one thing I did. I got cable TV in my room, and I watched the Honeymooners every night. Guys, <laughs> not even thinking of being a comedian. Just yeah. studying everything right. he did. Just, just loving it. And going to the basketball court the next day and fucking living the scenes. I remember still, freshman year in basketball, we would get on the number one bus from North Bergen High School to downtown, and we'd do the whole odd couple beginning. Dun, dun, and we'd do the whole thing, and they would drive uh-huh. the bus. The bus driver would pull over and say, guys, knock it off, please. <laughs> Did it go over your head at that age? I'm just trying to think of myself at 10, and I think that would go over my head. No. The shows that went over my head in those days were like English shows. I don't know. what Like Mary Hartman. Mary I still Hartman, don't know what they're saying on those shows. Like those type of shows went over yeah. my head. I liked... In those days, my favorite shows were like Room 222, which you guys would never remember, The Courtship of Eddie's Father, uh-huh. which was a brilliant show. The Waltons, which was a brilliant show. And then when I went to Catholic school, you had a schedule of what you watched every every night. Mm-hmm. There was kind of a pseudo vote, but the vote was already in by lunchtime. You took your buddies and said, tonight we're not going to watch fucking Happy Days. We're going to watch WWE. Uh-huh. And, you, and Lee would be the fucking factor, so we'd give Lee, like, candy. He's a swing vote. You know what I'm saying? Or we'd go, Lee, we'd protect you. And Lee would go, fuck that, I don't need you guys. And then we'd pay somebody <laughs> a dollar to kick Lee in the stomach. And then we'd go, Lee, you want to be protected? Jesus yeah, okay. Christ. I'll take the vote. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't last a day in prison or Catholic school, I guess. <laughs> it's funny, because tonight we were watching uh, the news before we ate dinner. And I, I'm a world news tonight motherfucking dude. Since Since... For twenty years. What's that? What is, what station is that? ABC. Okay. That's my favorite. That's the one that tells you about the world news, not fucking locally. And the first ten minutes used to be interesting. Now it's politics every fucking night. And the GOP and the POS. Yeah. And I have no idea what the fuck they're talking about, so it's killed me. Right. But they get into tornadoes. Tonight they had two female cops got beat up by a, a dude, and then a Samaritan came over. They got goofy fucking stories. Now yeah. I forgot what I was going to tell you. I'm so high on that. <laughs> That's reason. all right. Yeah, I took more than I should have, but that feels good just the same, you know? What's that? I'm really high on this marijuana right now. Good. Yeah, it's yeah, It's been yeah, a while. Yeah. You're with family. Mm-hmm. No, it feels good. We got nowhere to go. We'll get delivery later. We'll get we, were, to uh, we were listening to Hotel California before this, and I really got in the mood for the fucking the laid-back stylings of that this is California a, lifestyle. That is such a crazy fucking album. If I thought if I if I told you guys that when I was listening to this album in my mother's living room that I'd be listening to this album forty years fucking later, I'd tell you you were crazy. Yeah. I'd tell you you're crazy. Like if somebody came up to me and they said, Listen, forty years from now you're gonna let me listen to this album, I go, You're fucking crazy. I would hate this. I'd evolve out of this. This right. you can't listen to it every day. But when you hear the album in its entirely, you know, yeah. it takes me back. It's good it shit, takes me man. back to the living room and drinking fucking sodas and jumping up and down like an asshole and being stoned. And then about 4.45, I put cologne on <laughs> and I put Visine <laughs> in my eyes and shit. Yeah. And then my mother would come home and ask me stupid questions, what I'd do till I was school. Yeah. And by that point, I'd be coming down. I'd just lock myself in my bedroom too. Yeah. She'd say, come down for dinner, then I'd be sober. Do you guys have any relationship, not like not like the actual relationship, but with former players? Because I'm just starting to see players that I grew up with as a kid retire and start being like broadcasters, and and it's it's weird, and it's also I, I like watching them on TV because when I see like a lot of the ESPN coverage, they're just analysts. I Man, I never saw like Mark Slareth play or something like that. But if you do, you see people that you that played when you were a kid and you were like oh yeah that's, I, I like I just like seeing them talk about it because it makes me remember in 1984 I was three quarters retarded 
I was 21 years old. I was living <laughs> in Aspen, Snowmass Village, Colorado, in a fucking, I was house sitting. Okay. Maybe a little late. I'm lying to you guys. Maybe 86. All right. It was 86. I'm living in Boulder, Colorado. I'm 24 fucking years old. And one day it just came to me. I said, well, someday Charles Bronson's going to die. And someday Julius Irving's going to retire. And I'm going to be fucking cracked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be fucking cracked. Because they were the glue all those years when I was a kid then. Uh-huh. Black Sabbath. Right. Like, you know, I didn't think of musically because you could always listen to the music, but these guys are going to stop making movies. I, I know there's, like, LeBron So I understand James. what you're saying. No, I understand what you're saying. LeBron James has been in the NBA for 14 years. Already? Yeah, he, he got drafted in 03. <laughs> Can you believe that? They're already talking about him, like, I thought, because I, I don't have any cable for a while. So I was watching ESPN, and they said, like, when he rests and then. When he needs to, he'll turn it on. Like I'm, he's already, they're already talking about him. Like he's in winding down. I didn't realize this. I mean, I, how old is LeBron James now? Let me check. He's thirty. Yeah, he was eighteen when he started, so he's probably 32, 33 I'm not going to do that kind of math. You look it up. You know, I think a lot about you, Matt Fultron. I know. Think a lot about you, man. Two thousand four. <laughs> Two thousand four. Yeah, something around there. And I think I, I met you at the store. And you, yeah. At that time, you were pushing the white shirt with the black jacket. And, uh, <laughs> I don't even I'm at remember store. what I was wearing, you know, but there was definitely blazers involved. Blazers yeah, involved. Yeah. And I was always a fan of comedy, and I watched you. And one night, you went up there. There was maybe 18 people, but in your mind, it was the garden. Right. You know, and you just went up there with a smile on your face, and I, and I fell in love with you, and it was... There was a night there was like a priest up there, a fake priest for a while. <laughs> yeah, you keep talking about that. I, always, I don't remember who that was. That was a character somebody did? Yeah, I don't fucking yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Crack me. Right. But it's so weird that I see you now and you're in a transition in your life that I was at uh-huh. for like 10 years. The feature act. Right. Headliner. Uh, limbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like know? headline sometimes. Yeah, like you headline sometimes. Feature mostly. Feature uh, sometimes they call you like on a Tuesday. Are you available tomorrow in Tampa? Right. I'll be there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they know like, I can handle the yeah. job. Yeah, it's funny uh, how you're in that limbo and you're just waiting for that last push. It could be a movie, it could be a special, it could be a fucking commercial, it could be anything. You sure. don't know what it could be. Yeah, if you I was know, like, where's the yeah. beef? It could be You that don't know thing. where it could be. It could be the podcast. It's in that limbo. I, I, remember, I still remember having this conversation with Steve Renazizi, with you now. It's yeah. such a fucking mind fuck. Because it's like turning 50. You don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. You're going to die. You know, you get to a realm here where everybody knows who you are. Casting people know who you are. Right. You just need to find out when the project's getting done so you get your foot in the door and go, listen, what if I played this character and I played this motherfucker this way? Yeah. And they got three guys. They got to pay $15 million to already. And they were thinking of another guy. So that would make their budget $60 million. But you know what? That guy... Or maybe that guy was worth $3 million. That guy wouldn't change the fucking dimension. You go in there with a different perspective on the character. Jay Moore has done it. There's a lot of comedians who have gone in there and changed the whole perspective of a movie. That's where you're at right now. You're right there. You know, you could be put on that Chris Rock tour. Anything. (laughs) Sure. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know. It's all a possibility. Yeah. Yeah, What were you saying? Like, I was in that position for fucking years. I still am. Where you're waiting for the fucking doorbell to ring. Right. Like, you're waiting for your ship to come in, and roles, movies are getting made, and you're like, I could have played that. Yeah. I could have done this this way. I wish I would have known about it. I wish I would have known about Narcos. I would have gone on Narcos and talked a mean fucking Spanish game. (laughs) Right. Fuck you. I would have definitely got a passport for Narcos. I would have moved to Colombia. <laughs> I'd come back 90 pounds lighter and yeah. shit. That's Talking beautiful. Colombian shit. Yeah, I would have gone out, you know, that, that that the host who later went to play the host in Celia Cruz, uh, the one family cousin, the one that uh, left with the sister-in-law, the chubby dude that was an informer at first, and he, he worked for Pablo. <laughs> I could, I, could, I could work that fucking role like yeah, a motherfucker. Yeah, sure. Right. You know me. I'm an animal. Of course. Oh so God. I know, like, I, I, I was in that position from, you got to remember, dog, the Longest Yard made me headline for about 10 weeks. Uh-huh. But I didn't sell no tickets. It was Gotcha. Long, it was Longest Yard people. Right. It was, no, 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 no. It was Adam Sandler people. Uh-huh. And after they saw my act, they were very disgruntled. <laughs> really? <laughs> they stopped trying to book you? Oh, my God. Listen Let's hear me. it. 
the movie comes out in That's May. the best way to say it ever. The movie comes out in May of 2005. <sighs> and it's a great premiere. Everybody's happy. Comes out to number two of the week and I lost to Chris Rock's movie which Chris Rock was in two movies at the same time yeah one was number one and one was number two and he beat us by like maybe three or four million or something okay we were cracked like I was cracked right like I wanted to talk some shit at the store <laughs> yeah what right. the fuck have you done and shit yeah I'm in a movie that's number one and shit you know uh-huh. what I'm saying so what the fuck was I gonna say okay so <laughs> I'm Lee nothing happens the movie comes out Memorial Day weekend. Nothing happens. Not yeah. a fucking, not a tinkle. Not even a fucking a birthday card. Nothing. Not even a fucking nothing. <laughs> by August, I'm Edible scratching. arrangement. By August, I'm scratching my head. I'm like, should I just put on my jersey and walk around? Right. Like, should I just be an asshole? My buddy would call me and go, Comic-Con, come down, put your shirt on. Right. And get $10 a picture. i go, bro, I got a little bit more class than that shit. Right. And... I'm one of those guys who, I, all right, it didn't work out for me. And one day I got a call. I ain't doing Joey Diaz, whatever. Da, 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 da. ESPN Radio New York. We're putting together a longest yard show. Mm-hmm. And we're going to fly you out and put you up and give you a couple yard sticks and you do this show at the comic strip in New York. We're going to advertise on the radio the whole fucking Shazam. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it was me. Jesus. You guys know I got a great memory. I forget yeah. this whole thing. Like, okay. The only thing I remember, you know who showed up? Who? Who was in the movie with me, and he showed up to watch me. And we became friends during the movie. Solid guy. But yeah. here I am in New York City. My friends are in the audience. Mm-hmm. And who comes to see me but the guy from the Warriors. Warriors. The movie? Yeah, come out, come out and play. play. Yeah. He, he's in the longest yard. Okay. And our trailers are right next to each other. And he's right. one of the most, like, I learned from him. Mm-hmm. There's something like when you meet somebody and you go, oh shit. Yeah, and they're knocking it out of the park. That's right how it's done. Yeah, yeah. That's why that dude was opposite Eddie Murphy. That's why that dude was phenomenal in The Crow. Right. That's why that dude, every performance he's in is from The Warriors, he's who he is. Yeah. And I watched what he did. He always trained karate with the same guy, uh-huh. little Chinese guy in the village. He lives in New York City. He bought the fucking redstone that he grew up in. He trained karate no, no, in front of you? No, no, no. He would he would do, you know, do forms at yeah. the fucking thing. Okay. And everybody thought he was crazy. Uh-huh. But I got where he was coming from. He was a sweetheart of a guy. Bro, yeah. he would tell you things while you were acting. That really? That change your world. That's funny because I love him in The Warriors. I love The no, Warriors. No, 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 no. Yeah. no that, you know, I tell this story. He got The Warriors because a friend of his told him, can you cover for me in a play? Oh, really? He went in there. Walter Hill was in the audience. Offered him the fucking role. Made mm-hmm. him audition. Bad. When he first moved to New York from Michigan, he moved to the Bronx in 68. Yeah. There was no long-haired people. Those people, right. those are times them like long-haired people. He yeah. lived upstairs. And he said that he'd be in his apartment sleeping and guys would be banging bottles outside going, dirty hair. <laughs> Come out and play, yay. <laughs> really? And yeah. that's where he got that. So you understand, oh, okay. you understand yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Some, sometimes in life you borrow shit. It just comes up yeah. right when you need it. Yeah, when it I just did comes the longest yard, because Serrano in uh, Major League wore a jock. Mm-hmm. You, ever, you like Major League? You never watch any Major yeah, League? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've Major watched League's, that. Major I love League's that. one of the greatest stories of all time. But there's a Cuban dude. There's the voodoo. Yeah, the voodoo, like uh, a <laughs> superstitious guy. Yeah, but yeah. In one scene he's got a jock on yeah. when the owner comes in. So we had our locker room scene. Uh-huh. I said, I'm Cuban. Let me do what Serrano did. That's why I wore a jock in that <laughs> right, scene. Right, right, right. Fuck yeah. You learn from other people. You yeah, know? absolutely. So I learned that from him. He was always on time, an hour. He always knew his lines. He always came prepared with two takes on every scene. Really? So he two demanded that. Yeah, he would tell you yeah. day one, how you doing, man? Listen, listen, how we're going to do this shit. He go, we're going to do it your way, your way, and then we're going to do one for me, and then we're going to do one for throwaway. That's awesome. And he would bang it, and you look yeah. at him and go, holy fuck. How did he come at that role from that direction? Right. And I knew I could never be that good. That was 20 years of theater and sure. films opposite people, and he yeah. knew people, and this is what he did. No, he was a fucking actor. He loved it, yeah. But he told me one time, I don't do TV. For you, for me to tell you that's like, I don't do the road. Yeah. I don't do TV. Right. 
that's where your major genius is. You mm-hmm. do you do a couple shows, you get residuals to your fucking thirty eight. Yeah. You get residuals to fucking tomorrow then. When you're eighty, you get a residual because somebody in China yeah. ordered on a fucking pay T V or something. So how you know, he didn't do T V. I didn't like it. But I recently saw him on something, so things are yeah. bad all over. T V's different now. I recently saw him on CW playing like a fucking devil on one of those shows. Good. So things are bad all over. You need that pension, <laughs> Sometimes. People Sometimes need that work. pension and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. TV is like more sophisticated than movies right now, anyways. And actors are, are like more interested in doing TV, I think. Well, because the movie bit. Listen, first off, this is easy as shit. So yeah. let's cut it out. Let's okay. cut the fucking right. games out. Right. Like the beauty about that, you do the math. Okay, there becomes a time you don't become that much of a draw anymore. Mm-hmm. And a producer from CBS comes to you and says, "Listen, man, you could be a great cop on this show." Starting salary seventeen five. You shoot twelve episodes your first year. The show becomes a hit. Lee. You come back. You're at twenty two. <laughs> Starting salary you is seventeen thousand five hundred. You're at thirty seven five. Oh my you God. come back. You're at fifty G bows an episode, dog. And now it goes into episode six. You're at sixty two thousand. You know those guys. I remember every time the episode plays, you get Jesus. And when the epi- when the series ends, you get Jesus. So. A lot of these guys are like, yeah, let me do TV. It's a security. You see these people who go from show. How much money do you think the chick from Seinfeld has? How many shows? I have no idea. I just watched the other day. She she made me laugh my ass off on VPN. She's great. She really is great. Yeah. At first, I'm like, ah, she's washed up. I got to be honest. I I reversed my decision. Uh huh. She fucking cracks me up in VP. Now I watch it. She she's cracks me a fuck too, up. Man. Yeah, she still got it, man. And I watched that movie the other day. Let me tell you something. None of her movies are home runs, but I can't stop watching it. I love that fucking girl. Who? The little girl from Saturday Night Live with the blue glasses that plays the fucking congresswoman or the president to be. What's her name, Lee? You went to the movie when she plays sisters? Don't, Tina Fey. Oh, Tina, Tina Fey. Fey. Yeah. yeah. Dog, I was watching a movie of her where she sold her. <laughs> she bought eggs. She bought eggs. Oh, and yeah. Greg Kinnear's in the movie and shit. Uh-huh. I love Tina Fey. <laughs> right. I couldn't take my eyes off her. Uh-huh. When people talk shit on people like this, there's people I love. Don't fuck with them. Right. Like, I would make a movie with Tom Cruise and Tina Fey. Of course. Like, I love Tom Cruise. No people, doubt about it. The Scientology with me, I look the other way with Tom Cruise. Yeah, you know? I'm not bringing it up. To. I'm a hypocrite. Come on. I look the other way. When I see Tom Cruise and Collado, listen, if you walk into the Scientology temple... I love you. You know what I'm it's saying? It's a beautiful building. Yeah, it's a beautiful it's building. It's a beautiful building. Bro, Scientology's in trouble. Was is that? that real? Was that real? They're I don't putting know. more money Listen into... I don't know if that was fake Facebook stuff, so I don't... I didn't... The one in Tennessee? Oh, no. What well, happened? Listen, dog, that's redneck country. That's oh, Bible no. Belt. They put the motherfuckers in jail. <laughs> they put Scientologists in jail? No. For being Scientologists? No. What happened? What, you, what happened? Sign, okay, the Scientologists... some guy went in there... And he wanted to cleanse his soul, and he wanted to he pay it, and they kept him in there for nine months against his will. Holy shit. And he shit. got a cell phone, and he called the cops, and the cops came, and they were living on trailers with blankets and shit. Dude. So they arrested everybody, and, and this is Tennessee. This isn't California where people right. liberal-minded and like, oh, yeah, Scientology. So now I read this thing the other night that they want the man Trump to <laughs> go after Scientology for back taxes. Uh huh. Like that's the new fucking thing I read the other day. Like they want Trump to go after mm-hmm. Scientology for back taxes. It's too much money. That they, they would just cripple him. You think so? Yeah, it would just. There's no they, way. There's too much money behind it. Don't they have billions? And what isn't that? Isn't that a Scientology building on Burbank? Did you They're see all what they Scientology did? Did buildings. You see what they did that's there? humongous. Why do you think they put four million dollars on that corner? It sells. No, because <laughs> they're about to fucking well sells. Yes. But they're about to rebuild this whole neighborhood. They're about to retake this whole fucking neighborhood. You have to be a Scientologist now, Lee. I hope you're comfortable with that. You won't be able to live in this neighborhood. Neither will I. Nope. They're about to blow. I told John Budd over at VMAC, I said, John, if I was you, I'd start thinking about the future. He goes, Why? I go, You see how much money Scientology spent on your corner? He goes, I saw that. I go, for them to spend the small five million, something's going to happen up here. Yeah. And all that part of North Hollywood that looks like it's 1951 still. Right. It looks like it's 1950 fucking Absolutely, one. yeah. 
and it's and it's not even attractive anymore. Like the only thing that I go up there for is to go to martial arts supply store. Yeah, because Bruce Lee used to go in there. So at least give him the first shot. Like I, I got nothing to do sometimes in the daytime. I go up there on a Tuesday and walk around, look at swords, like yeah. an asshole, and right. kicking gear. Do I buy some? I buy a mouthpiece for ten for just walking around like a mobo in your store. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I'll buy a shoelace for a fucking punching <laughs> bag or something. Who's stopping you? Yeah, no. I, but the place is fucking legit. You yeah. Go in there sometimes. Gene LaBelle is in there. You know, I don't say two words. You know, right. me. I just mingle. Look at the Bruce Lee shit. <laughs> I look at the pads. I look at the fucking uh, mingle in this. I don't know what does mingling mean in the store. I've never mingled in the store. Listen, you know what it means. I you hang up, out for a little I, bit. Listen, Lee, I grew up on Black Belt magazine, and in there there'd be a section, and it would be Honda martial arts supplies in the city. Mm-hmm. So during the week, I'd go to fucking karate, and on Saturdays, me and eight little karate gangsters that did not smoke pot. Some of them were Christian. Some of them didn't curse. We'd take a bus into the city, and we'd go to Honda Martial Arts Supply in the middle of New York City in 1975. Uh-huh. 10, 11. And we'd, go to, we'd lie to our mothers and tell her we were going to a karate tournament in the Bronx. <laughs> and we'd go to the city, and we'd fucking go to the seventh floor. And it was like heaven when you were a kid. Right. Like it was a warehouse floor with glass and everything was in, in glass casings to really ooh how much is that Ten ninety nine. I'm gonna have to come back I'm gonna have to save for three weeks and get the paper route and shit right. like we'd buy the iron palm technique like we'd get the bag and get the juju juice and we'd do the iron palm technique like assholes cause in those days there was a movie that the guy would go like this and his palms would get red and then he'd fuck you up with the palm of death and right. shit we go over there and buy like geese and we buy like headbands and uh, the things that you hold and punch that are wooden and it's a pad and yeah. we beat them till our knuckles would bleed because <laughs> yeah. they were leather we were lunatics dog <laughs> lunatics did, what, right. what did your mom think that you were just like terrible at karate you never won a medal you I went to karate every night wall. from the time I got from the time I moved from the time I was six to the time I got hit in the head with the lunchbox Oh. As soon as the stitches came out, maybe two weeks after that, I was putting karate. And I started going like three days a week, and my behavior, blah, blah, blah. So they started putting me in there five days a week. And I got kicked in the stomach one time so hard by a fat kid. He knocked the air out of me. Dog, I didn't go to karate for like two fucking days. I was <laughs> petrified. <laughs> and then I said, fuck it. And I went back, and I learned how to kick. And, you know, like something woke me up. Yeah. And I went in there, and I liked it, guys. And there was a bunch of geeks. And we go there on Saturdays and mop the fucking thing. But you know what? I wasn't getting in trouble then. Yeah. You would wear black gi with a fist on the fucking thing that said go Jew. <laughs> and I'd be training with black dudes and shit. And then we moved to Jersey. And I joined this other place. Fu Jiao Pai Kung Fu. But I couldn't do all that stuff flying through the air. So I didn't really like it. My friend yeah, went right. to karate. Yeah. My friend went to karate, the traditional karate. So it was like Gushin Ru Karate. And I started going down there, and it went. And those days, guys, it started at 4, and you stayed there till 7, 8 o'clock at night. Because your goal was to even, to be 10 or 11, but to be let into the 13-year-old class. And that's where you got the shit knocked out of you, but you got better <laughs> quick. Once you got in that class and you were doing good, mm-hmm. you'd do good in tournaments that were 11-year-olds. So that's what we did. We'd stay there, sweep the floors. We thought the master was real. We'd bow and shit. Uh, I, know, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like you said, you went to these tournaments, but then you went and did all that other stuff. Yeah, we didn't. Got, your mom ever think like he's going all this time? Why isn't he winning any, any medals and any? No, 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 no. I used to bring home trophies in those days. <laughs> okay. You know, I was just thinking about my little karate. My favorite one ever. Oh, I have a favorite was, one too. Was from the last karate tournament I won, form. It was like a two-foot trophy. I won kata. And I, that was uh, February 19th, 1979. I still mm-hmm. remember that trophy being in the middle of the mantle. I was proud of it. And shit. I had a few medals. I had a few smaller trophies. I got a skateboarding trophy that I still got. Did you? First place, Vert, Pax River, Maryland. What's up? <laughs> it was the summer I learned the invert, man. I was unstoppable. You still Plus, only two other right? people entered the contest. You still write the skateboard from time to time. Really? From time to time. It's been a year. Like, I got it on my resume as an actor. So, if they, like, hit me up, I got to make a demo tape real quick. And I'm fucking 
dying falling on the ground lay on this skateboard just to get like 30 seconds of footage i'll show you after though i can't i land a, a shove it and a kickflip in this footage no way and then i went into the room the audition room and i did 360s which i didn't even think i could do but i just fucking went for it uh didn't get the job but at least it got me back on the skateboard that was cool i can't the moral to that story i can't even do a kickflip with like those hand skateboards well that's a lot harder than actually doing a kickflip really i have uh, no absolutely. balance i'm so- well I can't do it with my fingers either. Okay. Nor do I know anyone that really can. Joe, the audience misses you big time. Who? <laughs> the audience. They drop a fucking audition on you at 10 o'clock at night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. At least you don't have to do any skate footy. You know? I never skateboarded. I yeah. hated that shit from day one. Thank you, son. Look at you. It's beautiful. Yeah, I got a fucking audition. I want to be around. This could be a whole another life for you, Joe. This could be the one. Somebody breaks your heart. Some somebody <laughs> twice as smart <laughs> as I. There's definitely THC in that uh, candy you gave me. I, I don't think so. No, I'm telling you. You, you guys sure? need to re-examine we'll the product. Um, I feel slightly out of it. That's what I gave it to you for. Do you hear this song? Do you guys hear this song? No. What song? Who leave you to? <laughs> Look at Lisa I cracking funnies on pool Matt, Matt Fultron and shit like that. <laughs> the fuck is going on here? I did that prank one time and a kid he lost his mind. And that's funny. Danny Bianculo just posted a picture of the kid. <laughs> His name is Kurt Lorenzo. One night we were fucking high as fuck on acid. I mean, we were burning. Right. That's when acid would burn. Like, I would look at Lee and Lee would be purple. Uh, and we would you would be look- scared of Lee? No, we would like to look at each other for a few minutes and then we'd giggle because we were both looking at the same thing. We were both looking at the same thing, you know? The same horrific purple so, so person. It was, th- it was three of us. It was me, Kurt Lorenzo, and this kid, Louis Castellino. And we're fucking going to this movie. I forget. We went to like the Pink Floyd. We were on fire. Right. I, at that time, I was eating double barrels of sunshine. <laughs> okay. That was like, uh, I got, I got, turned, like, I I used to get acid in, in uh, East Stroudsburg. And from time to time, the one guy would take me in the back room and go, listen, what I'm about to give you, don't fuck with if you don't if you don't think people can handle it don't give them this <laughs> okay and i go how good is it and the guy would go Shh. i told you lee these guys were 24 uh-huh if i was 16 these guys were maybe if i'm exaggerating 23 i didn't ask questions they gave me a great deal on acid <laughs> I would walk in there with four hundred dollars and walk out of there with a box of goodies. Uh-huh. Oh my god! And they had the campus police on the payroll. These kids were geniuses. They said, "Fuck school. We're gonna make fucking shit in our basement." Right. And they were making black beauties. No, no, no. The black beauties they were blum- they were buying pharmaceutical black beauties on the fucking off market and selling them to me. They were probably buying them for a quarter a piece and selling them to me for fifty cents a piece. I could get a dollar for those things. Like, these kids were geniuses. Uh-huh. They knew, listen, we'll keep our prices low, but you buy only from us. Right. You show up every fucking Saturday. And I guess they did something. They were geniuses because every day of the week, they had different people coming to different places. Uh-huh. They would never go to the same place at the same time, but it was always on campus mm-hmm. because they had campus police right. sealed off. They were fucking geniuses. I forget what their names were. It don't matter. They're probably but, happier that way. But from time to time, Lee, I would go, then he'd go. he called me uh, Coco something. He was a white kid from fucking Brooklyn. But like he loved the whole Spanish culture, and that's how we attracted. The other dude was just a white Jewish dude. Uh-huh. And they were both like, what, what's the biggest thing you could be? Like a chemistry major? But they figured out how to make ludes. Mm-hmm. and they figured out how to make different types of acid <laughs> and they were cooking guys yeah. these guys had nailed it and every went, every week you met them they always had something different a blotter acid four way acid uh-huh. liquid acid they always had something but every once in a while they pull you in the other room and go listen I can only give you a hundred hits of this for a certain reason 
I'm going to give you this for four dollars a piece. You're going to get ten. And they're going to end up in the hospital if they're not right. <laughs> it's like they would tell you. <laughs> if they're not psychologically right, they're going to be in Don't the give them this shit. Don't give them this shit. They're going to go Sid Barrett on And I would ass. rip half the piece. I would take 50 and yeah. give them to the Colangelo brothers. Oh, okay. And they would eat that sheet. In two days of camping, the Colangelo brothers. <laughs> Finally, Steve ended up stabbing himself in 82 on a camping trip. <laughs> Not on my ass, and God forbid. Okay. Please, thank God they didn't come to me that weekend. But he was unstable. I was out of here. I was, <laughs> I was, <laughs> was going to ask you what, you know, what your vetting process was. I was, for out, this acid. I was out of the acid game by that point. <laughs> it it used to be, anymore. listen, I swear to my mother's grave. And I'll get Timmy Rush to call in here. When I was in high school on Friday nights, I had to be 16. Colangelo had to be 18. He was a sophomore by that point. What? Oh, my God. He, uh, uh, he's an 18-year-old sophomore? Oh, hysterical. He was writing his own notes when the teachers <laughs> would go, why were you absent yesterday? Give me a note. I'll whip one up in a minute. <laughs> Colangelo was the real deal. Yeah. So it was him, his brother, and Tedder. And Colangelo was a big kid, but his brother was a fucking pro bodybuilder. Okay. And he was yoked, and that meant he was yoked on the goods all the time. And then they had, they had out with this other dude that was dangerous, too. His name was Tedda. He was just dangerous. And these guys, I swear to my mother's grave, would buy 100 sheets of acid, 100 hits of acid on a sheet. Uh-huh. And they'd go camp on a Friday and come back on Sunday. Wait, wait, wait. It's, they buy 100 of 100? They'd buy 100 hits. Okay. So three of them would disappear into the woods on Friday, and they'd come back Sunday, and the acid was gone. They'd eat, wow. they'd eat, they'd eat, eat. 33? 33, it's acid. Or the window is. Christ, man. And they would burn. Like, they would They would tell me the stories that they would black out mm-hmm. and lose each other and shit. And they had to call the ambulance on time. What the fuck oh, are they doing? Oh, helicopters. But years later, they were getting high somewhere, and the brother stabbed himself in the stomach, and he lived. Yeah, on 11 hits of acid a night, you're going to do that to yourself. You fucking believe that shit. Oh. At that time, I could do, like, three hits of acid. Oh my god, a huge thing about to go. Oh my god. I don't know acid. I've never done this acid. It's oh fun, god. but I can't even imagine driving to go get it. Like I only want uh, like that's, I only That's do what you don't like. Like it it I don't like it that much to like go get, like it's crazy. Really, the insane. shit I've given you. Yes. I, first of all, I've always taken care of you. You and have. I, and I and I I'm bullshitting you on what I'm giving you. I don't think but so. I, but I bullshit no, cuz if I gave you what I'm supposed to give you, you wouldn't be sitting there no more. You'd just be getting out of the psych ward. That's <laughs> what you you're would, supposed to get. You'd be like the fucking lieutenant in the Pink Panther. Remember the Pink Panther drove him so crazy? Yeah. He went to the psych ward for like a fucking year, and then he came out, and the Pink Panther would sneak up on him from time to time to apologize, uh-huh. and he would freak out and shit. Lee, that's what you would end up with. I would give Lee, when I was doing acid, I would take it at 8, and by 11 o'clock, I just go into this fucking haze. Is this PM or AM? This is PM. Okay. And I wouldn't come back into focus till about one one thirty. And then I then I know who the fuck I am, but I'd still be tripping. Right. Like you lose yourself for three hours, Lee. Huh. Like you'd call me the next day and say, Where did we go? You don't remember we're in front of seven eleven? Laughing at the lady with the one leg <laughs> like that night that I parked. <laughs> the night I pulled up with you. Did that and happen? I, oh, me and... <laughs> saw that poor lady. We pulled up. Or was that a the, hallucination? No, but that's the type of shit that happens. Yeah. Like, Lee, you want to walk over there and drive? Let's walk over there. And then you walk to 7-Eleven and it's real. The lights are. Yeah. It's like that scene and go. What, what, like what do you do with the eyes? I'm always worried about my eyes. Nothing. You just fucking don't make direct eye contact. Make eye contact, but very briefly. Be shifty. Be shifty. And untrustable. Yeah. Walk, we're paying cash. <laughs> we're going to pay. And now we got to walk out of there. You know, there's people that live in those parks waiting for guys like you and me to be walking by. The people in the cops go have to go in that park at night because they got a lot of homeless, crazy people. They're looking to get a bottle of beer. <laughs> so just to go to that 7-Eleven and walk back to the office, Lee. And then we go to the fucking diner and order food and we can't eat it and we just stare at each other and we laugh at the waitress and somebody would come over and ask us for two dollars. Oh no 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 no! 
The last time I took Ari with Acid, one of the yeah. last times we went down to a concert. We were too cheap to buy the tickets. Yeah. So we ended up going to a diner, eating food, and we just stared at it. Yeah. What's that food where everybody goes for the dip sandwich? Philippe's. Yeah. Yeah. We went to Philippe's. Yeah. And we didn't eat. You we just, you just sat there the like. Laughing at people? Yeah, you, you, you think it's safe to go home yet? And we got on the train back to LA. <laughs> and then we got home and some movie was on about a bounty hunter, the chick with Mickey Rourke. We watched yeah. that on the way down. That was The wrestler. Ass- no, that's not the fucking yeah. wrestler. He's not a bounty hunter. Oh. He's a wrestler. The fucking wrestler. <laughs> what's the matter with you? You know what's the matter with me. <laughs> I'm on your pills, man. I'm on your fucking candy. Fuck I'm yeah. out of my mind. It's Monday night. You better eat the other I'll half. I'll be sobering up around uh, Milwaukee. You, eat other, you gotta eat the other half. Oh, I'll eat that a little bit later, Joe. Oh, Let shit. me get through this oh, first. Oh, Lee, you still got the pink eye. I'm a, that's okay. No, you gotta eat this for you for later. This is nightcap. You know what I'm saying? Oh. This, what is that? What does that do? I have no like, idea. That's probably the <laughs> stuff he got in, in, in whatever he was. This is the victim uh, of weed. Lee, this is 25 fucking milligrams. I have, I've had enough milligrams. Like, you should have that right now. This is a gumball. You should have it right now. Oh, I'm not going to have it. This that's a, for you to this do. This is a gumball, Lee. I don't want gum right now. <laughs> All right. Thank I'm you. Give the option. Your breath, so your you, breath dude. You, someday you're going to be on an island. Your plane's going to go mm-hmm. down. You're going to be on an island walking around like the survivor. You're the only survivor. You're going to wish you had a fucking 35 milligram edible. You're going to go, right now, I can go for that 35 milligram edible. I feel like I want a little bit more. You will regret the- this, man. Oh, my goodness. I'm happy you came on tonight. It's good that Me we'll too, be working man. together in Milwaukee. Detroit. Where are we playing in Michigan? Michigan. So- we're at the Magic Hat or something like that theater right. in Ferndale, motherfucking Michigan. And Wednesday night, we're at the Turner Ballroom, the Turner Hall Ballroom in Milwaukee. One show, ba boom, ba beam, we're out of there. No more drama. We're going to go eat Italian food. That's going to be great. In the Italian neighborhood, maybe get a meatball sandwich. That's or what I'm going to do, yeah. Something, you know what I'm saying, Lee Syatt, you bad motherfucker. Lee Syatt's going to be buying a car on Saturday. I'm you not know, buying a car. He's co signing and no, shit. No, I'm not. <laughs> under his fucking, You're buying your girl a car? No, I'm his, not. You might as well buy it under your name. Well, what, are you name what are you doing? What are you doing? Actually, my my girl. Is, <laughs> What's he doing? She, my his, girl's buying her first car, car, and I'm going with her. You're co-signing. He's co-signing. You're buying a car. Yeah. She won't need to. She has good credit. No, you just, you just bought a car. He's co-signing. Oh he's my mind. god, it's fine. Everything will be fine. He's a, but you are you're co-signing for a car. I'm not co-signing for a car. <laughs> what are you doing then? I'm going with her. I'm just going with her to be there. Oh, you gonna negotiate? Uh, this I think this place is another one of those no negotiating places. But we'll listen, see. you can still Jew. negotiate. You're a Jew, and you're not gonna bring him. Tell him to show up with five <laughs> yardsticks, and so tell him not to say a fucking word. They're gonna handle the whole fucking thing. <laughs> and you walk in there, and you go, I want to buy this goddamn car. <laughs> I'd love to see that. But I'm giving you a nickel under the fucking price. <laughs> I'd love to see you do that, man. Well, you buy this car today, and you start going, yeah, for 700 You just said five. <laughs> Would you do five? Yeah, I'll do five. Okay, well, hold on one second. Let me talk to my wife in Spanish. <laughs> and then make believe. Then you come back, and you go, no, my wife's somewhere at 650 She saw a car over at CarMax, and they'll do it over there for this price. All right, we're going to sell you the car it is. What about the little dent in the head? Fuck it. We'll take the car it is. She could drive to Van Nuys with dents in the fucking car. Who gives a fuck? In two weeks, they're going to steal the fucking thing anyway. We'll be back here through Enterprise. So. This is you tomorrow, Lee. No. I want you to say exactly yeah, you, that. If you're Jewish, Lee, Listen you to always the tape and get it memorized. Yeah. You don't buy nothing as is, Lee. All right? You always got to go in there. You always got to ask for something. It's 2017. They ain't making cars like they used to. Want to ask for extra cup holders or something? No, 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 no. Listen, let me Brighter talk to you. Brighter lights. Right. Or- before we do this, this is my wife. I love her. I'm going to marry her. We're going to move back to Mexico before Trump builds the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to take this Be car. Be Mexico. Listen to me. I'm not giving you 11 for that fucking car. I called my bank. Well, yeah, well, banks don't sell cars. We sell cars. I understand, sir. But this is a, is a serious here, okay? You cannot get 11 five for that car. I'm going to offer you 10 five for the fucking car. And you start from there, Lee. Oh, I can't do it for ten five. Listen, let me talk to my wife. You go over to yell at her in Spanish, maybe give her a backhand, and then come back and talk to the fucking dude again. It's the American way. Would she she used to be crying for extra. Would you buy the car today? And you go, yeah, but you got to give me seven fifty off. You just said a nickel. Now you start confusing. No, I said seven fifty American dollars. You're talking pesos. <laughs> You looked at my wife when you're fucking, are you racially profiling? <laughs> Let me call the fucking Juju Ju Association of America and I'll get you on fucking ABC News and see how funny it is then. All right, all right, all right. 
I'll give you the seven fifty. Don't call nobody. I ain't gonna call nobody. Tomorrow, man, you got all that's that, right? right. You can do word that, right? Word was gonna have to go down. Because it's gonna be eleven five plus warranty plus this plus that. Some, it's looking like it's gonna be probably a lease. That, they have some really good lease deals. And so. did she get the student one? Like she they, into well, it? we're not sure. The student one might only be if you buy it. So that it just depends on what she decides to do. It's either the good lease deal or, or but it's not that. It's not. It's like five hundred or seven hundred dollars usually, which is nice. It's like a da- good down payment. Buying a car is very stressful. It's, it's terrible. And, and the thing about buying a car today is why a lot of people say selling cars is very hard is because people don't go in there and they already know the prices. Right. So before you go in there, research Lee. Oh, yeah. She's, research, she knows you love, she you love all this shit. No, no, but you love all this shit. I don't know who to contact. I wish I could help you. I only have one guy that I know that if you like a car there, if you call me. Right. We'll go up there together, and he'll cut the deal that'll make your ass stand up. <laughs> if she wants, is it, okay, I'll, I'll ask, I'm sure she would like something from there. If she likes yeah, a set Subaru, that up. like a small, she Subaru. likes anything. She wants the cheapest deal she can get. She doesn't as long as it's automatic. This don't put in, nice. don't put in an American car because she needs a car. No, she likes Toyota. She likes Honda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Those yeah, are the two. Yeah. I got nothing against American cars. Honda. Every Honda has a backup camera now. Every Honda, That's like good, even the right? lowest model. That's a good That's thing, crazy. Right? Yeah, to me. Let me oh tell my you god! I forget I have it, and I go look at it, and it's fantastic. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it changed really the is world. A different world. That yellow line means stop the fucking car. Right. You pa pa pa, and you're in the fucking parking spot like a doctor. Yeah. And when you're stoned, that thing comes in handy. Right? <laughs> Absolutely, motherfucker. I wish it was on all the time, though. I wish like in the been. front, all sides. Yeah. So do you have an agent here, theatrical? Can we start getting you out? Yeah, audition? man, I got a theatrical agent. So call, get him on the phone. Say, look, this is fucking Matt Full Charge. Bark a little bit. Right. And say, I want to start going on co-stars. I'm a, I'm a comic. I'm out here. I need fucking, uh, I need fire coming at me from four different directions. I got the right. podcast. I need a couple of this. I need that. Do you ever and, do that? Do you ever call people up and tell them to get yeah. off their ass? You have to get, what agency are you with? There's some thing called Elevate, which actually is a lot of comics there that you would know. But it's nothing, forgive me, but it's nothing special. Hmm. I don't know what they're really capable of. Well, listen, you want to have a personal relationship with them, but you don't. Well, I just fucked that up, didn't I? Yeah. You got to you gotta go to lunch with them from time to time. You yeah. Gotta bring, you got to always be in their eye. If you're doing a show, make a flyer, send it to them. So they're always there's ways to fuck with them. Right. You don't have to go down there and smack motherfuckers and sit okay. down in a chair. There's different ways to get people involved. If they don't uh, respond to that, then you got to cut them loose. Right. And look for somebody else because you you can't live in Los Angeles. Like pretty soon, I'm gonna make a call for Lee. I gotta call a friend of mine. In fact, I'm playing phone tag with him. Uh, commercials. Yeah. I'm talking to people and they're like, "Dog, the money today in L.A. The little money there is." Is non-union commercials really non-union? Non-union, like a motherfucker. Oh that's my the, god! That's I the do word. It in a second. That's the word on the street right now. That they just pay a lot of money up front, then, right? Yeah, or? they let you know exactly what they're gonna pay you. There's no fucking monthly fees. You're not gonna get a check in the mail in nine months. Yeah. What they do is they go, Lisa, you're gonna play a fucking barber. It's gonna run uh, national and internationally. We're gonna give you seventeen five and go fuck yourself. And one day you're going to wake up and you're going to get postcards from fucking Canada going, this thing's been playing 10 times a day. So there's a downside to it. Right. And there's, for a while, you feel violated. You're like, these dudes are fucking making bank on my shit. But how long does it take to shoot that kind of commercial? Three days. And since it's non-union, you shoot like an animal. They shoot like animals. But, you know, because a lot of work is non-union now, I guarantee the non-union work they treat people a little better, you know. I don't know. I'm not in that game. But from speaking to different people and bumping into friends of mine from 10 years ago that I was seeing auditions, people like, I'm thinking of going non-union. Like, there's a part in the union in SAG that there comes a time where you could go world. It's called something. Uh-huh. It's called, like, worldwide or some shit, which means that you work, but it doesn't go towards your pension. Okay. So it's a win-lose situation. So if I come to you and I go, listen, I have a non-union project. You're going to make $300,000 fucking thousand dollars in 11 months, but you're going to have to shoot in Bulgaria. Okay. All right? 
I'm listening. Boom. You get three hundred. You get one hundred and fifty after ten episodes, and one hundred fifty thousand. I guess you pay a little tax in Bulgaria, but the rest goes to you. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. if that show becomes Seinfeld in Bulgaria, that's it. That's it. But a guy like you would do comedy shows in Bulgaria, right? And charge fifty two fifty at the door and get Lee to play the violin. And I'm ready. Jumping up I'm ready down. for all this to happen. Lee, are you so ready? You ready to do your part? I'm ready to be and a star in Bulgaria. The only commercial audition I've gotten in the last year, they told me exactly what they were going to pay me uh-huh. and what they wanted me to do. And I remember looking at it and going, that's fucking crazy. That this is what they're doing with the commercial auditions. Well, the commercial auditions used to be like shooting craps. Yeah. You didn't know. You went to them because you had nothing to do. Right. You had nothing to do that day. They just called everybody in. Yeah, they called everybody in. And you were one of those guys. You know what? I got nothing to do at 3.30 on a Thursday afternoon. Gotta go. And you go down there and you bump into Ari. Sure. Oh, you'd bump into eight dudes from the store. And two comedians. And bop, 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 bop. And I got this and I got that. And you start, then this guy goes, did they call you in for this? So sometimes by going to an audition, you bump into somebody who gives you information about another job. Yeah. So, you know, in those days, I would always go to those fuck down. Like, they were never strenuous for me. I would just wrap my day around. If it was at 11 o'clock, where was the audition? Boom. Marina Del Rey, there's a pizza joint down there that opens up at 11.15. It felt like you did something. Yeah, man. You know, so you make worth. a little fucking day yeah. of it. Now I can't do that. I don't get those type of auditions. Right. I get auditions to go to fucking Gower at 4 in the afternoon. That's what I want to do. <laughs> the, that's what I want to fucking do. You know what I'm saying? Go to Gower Gulch? Yeah, go to Gower Gulch to fucking at 4 in the afternoon. Uh-huh. You come out of there into fucking death traffic right there in Coenga. That's what you want to fucking do. But I'm still fortunate I'm getting auditions. Yes, you, you are. You You're on TV do. tonight, dog. Can you believe that shit? I can. You're a talented motherfucker. No, nah, You're dog. a funny motherfucker. You know, man, this was the first time ever. It's so. They called me in like two months ago for something else, and I went in there. And I actually bent over and showed him my ass. And I knew I had the room. Like, I knew when I walked out of the room that this wild card is perfect for the show. Yeah. You know, that's what they look at sometimes. It's how crazy you are and what you're willing to do in that fucking room. And they called as I was getting in the Uber to leave town. I go, you guys got to the time I get to LAX to let me know what you want to do. And they call back and they go, no, we're going to rewrite your role. Go on your trip. Enjoy yourself. Mm-hmm. When I came back, I go, that's going to be in the year 2019. They called a week later. So, but Mars is on there. Cool. The one kid we know from the store, the young kid comes in there. Yeah. So they all put words in for me. So, you know, right it's on. nice to be in town for 20 years. I've known Mars how fucking long. Yeah, just that I'm long, the, man. I've known Mars. I remember him late 90s at the yeah. at the comedy store. And we would sing while he was on stage and shit. Maz Jubani, Maz Jubani, Maz Jubani. He would go, he'd be fucking, he'd be doing, te- he'd be on like his seventh minute, and I'd walk by and see he was on stage. Yeah. And I'd creep up the stairs, I'd sit down, and I'd wait till he took a breath on stage, and I'd go, Maz Jubani, Maz Jubani. And all of a sudden he'd start dancing, hey, hey. hey. And, he, and then he would yeah. do like three more minutes, yeah. and I'd bust it out again, Maz Jubani, Maz Jubani. And he would dance along, and he never got mad at me. He was always, always been funny, man, since the first time I saw him. He's funny and warm. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember late night, Sunday nights there with him getting tanked. Yeah. Like, I was a mess on Sunday nights. Sunday nights have always, forever, will be my favorite fucking night of party. Still? No, no. Nah, what do I do? What Good do thing I we're coming man? home on Sunday. I, then, eat a, huh? I eat a lollipop on a, sad, on a Sunday night yeah. with my kid. That's as crazy as I Sure. Get, you know? But Sunday nights used to be your thing. But I grew up in a culture where Sundays, and especially September, once football came. You start early. You start early. Mm. You start early. So I came from that culture in North Bergen with those motherfuckers on Sundays. Their shit started at 10. If they were going to a game, their shit started at 9. And I'm not talking about a few beers. I'm talking about a few bumps, a half a lewd, you know, (laughs) drunk. Wait, and are you talking about like high school games? No, no, What games are they going to see? I'm talking about going to see the Giants. Okay, thank okay. God. Okay. You imagine taking Coke to see a high school game? I thought they were getting no, hyped no, up no, to no. go see, like, Burke I High. Listen, if I know anything about my hometown, there are people who get high and go to those fucking games. Yeah. 
get the ecstasy. We're going to the volleyball match. It's crazy. There's people who still live in high school. You know that in every town. Sure. You yeah, go to yeah, a yeah. game and they're there with the hat on, talking about 1984, mm -hmm. how they made the tackle against Canada. And you're like, oh, my right. God. Stays to confuse the movie come to yeah, life. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, no. That culture, that early morning Sunday culture where you get together at 12, and by 1 o'clock, somebody's tapping you on the shoulder. And before you leave the house, you're like, I'm just going to go out and have a few beers. Yeah. Like, that's how fucking stupid but intelligent but stupid uh -huh. you are at the same time. Right. Like, I remember leaving on a Sunday going, I'm going to go see what's going on. I got to work tomorrow at 8. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll come home like at 5. <laughs> You got there, you drank a fucking beer, yeah. then you did like two or three vodka fucking orange juices. Right. Two or and, three. And by the third vodka and it's orange like juice. It's like work, Lee. And by the third, somebody, somebody comes up to you, taps you on the hand, and goes, Psst, you want to go have a half a gram? <laughs> Absolutely. And you're like, fuck yeah, $25. <laughs> All right, you give them 25 bucks. Next right. thing you know, you're doing little bumps. Right, right. And all of a sudden, you're sitting there minding your own business. You're having the best buzz of your life. You could pop, you could go home. You could right, go home, absolutely. You, could go home, you got the energy for it, too. You could go home, jerk off twice, and go to bed. And Come nobody, once. And nobody yeah. knows nothing. And wake up like a four in the morning, drink coffee, and tip-top magoo, you're out there with a bowl of fucking honey loops, whatever the fuck Like an upstanding are. citizen. But after about three, four drinks, got a couple bumps in you. Here comes Johnny Dealer. <laughs> With a big bag, but he didn't. Do, he stayed in Friday night, uh -huh. so he's way behind in his payment uh -huh. schedule. So he bumps Which in. Which means savings for you. So he bumps into you, and all of a sudden he starts giving you fucking taste of that fucking voodoo. And it's four or five thirty in the afternoon. You're sitting there. You can't talk. Yeah. What's that like? What the fuck do you think it's like? It's like right this here. right now. Yeah, I was say. No, 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 guys. <laughs> we're having fun. Right. This is when you're locked, Jordan. You're at the bar. Uh -huh. You just got your eyes still on the screen, <laughs> and you don't want to even take your eyes off the screen because life is real. And yeah. you're fucking coked up to the gills. Uh -huh. The coke is dripping down your fucking throat. You're inhaling it. You're trying not to let people know, but it's 1984. The whole bar is on it. Right. People trying to be cool, but at this point in, in, in society, the coke wasn't that speedy. Uh -huh. So it was still people. So there were some people chilling. There were some people jawing, but not jawing. Jawing is when your jaw moves. Yeah. But your body does other characteristics, like your right. fingers will go, or you'll scratch your neck or something like that, or you'll scratch yeah, yeah, your nose, yeah. or you'll fucking twitch every four minutes like you went yeah, over to yeah, fucking right. Iraq. So, <laughs> so fucking, uh, <sighs> you go to these bars, and you, you were in there, and after about an hour... You felt everybody's energy. Like your body started, like it became like a tuning fork. Uh-huh. Because everybody around you was on that shit. Yeah. And, I, and I still remember like it was clear as, I stopped doing that type of shit where you would get together on a Sunday and not get home till Tuesday night. <laughs> you quit that? Like you'd be locked in a hotel room with eight people, right. snorting. Somebody would go out and make beer runs. Yeah. Talking shit, telling stories, talking uh. to chicks, locking yourself in the bathroom with a chick, letting her see if she'll finger you. I mean, yeah. it was just disgust. So wait, wait, wait. Do you say if she'll finger you? Whatever. Either way. It's four in the morning. The you're in a hotel later. room. You're strangers. It's 1984, 85. That's when I did that. And so kind of what was work on Tuesday like? Were you out of your mind? You walk in and they're like, where were you? And you're like, you're not going to believe it. <laughs> I got kidnapped by fucking Martians, and they transferred me to the black people who kidnapped Tom now, Hanks. Now, this job was union, I take it. No, no, no. Otherwise, at that time, I, listen, at that time, I would burn through jobs like yeah. you burn through fucking dollar bills. It was oh, fucking, yeah. I would have a job every week. And in those days, I, I you just, you, Lee knew somebody, you knew somebody. You come to me and go, you want to bartend? Sure. It would be that easy. I'd fuck you over in two weeks, right. and then Lee would come to me and go, hey, they need help over on my shipyard, sixteen bucks an hour. But you got to work midnight. So I'll take it. Right. You know, there was there was always you could always load trucks. Okay. There was APA. There was uh, Florida and Texas, and they all paid seventeen an hour. Uh huh. And you went in there at ten o'clock at night, and you worked till eight in the morning, and you kicked back the foreman a hundred bucks on one payday. Mm hmm And every time you kicked him a hundred bucks, he'd give you another shift. That's the way it works. So you right. made you made six for the night, but you had to kick back one. 
It's like an agent. Yeah. So now when you call to shape, because you had a call at like 9 yeah. o'clock, I start calling on a corner tonight. Angel there, yeah, this is Angel. Angel Joe Diaz, I'm available tonight. <laughs> you work here before? Yeah, when? I don't know, two weeks ago. All right, come on down. If I like you, you work tonight. Uh-huh. You got to get in your fucking car. I didn't have a call, so that means I had to have like Lee on fucking hold. Lee, right. 10 to 9, I'll call you. Be close by. I'll give you 10 bucks for gas. Dro- and I would just get dropped off. Uh-huh. I would work 10 hours and go, I don't know how I'm getting home. Right. And dog, God loved me because 9 out of 10, somebody was going close to where I was going. Right. And they'd go, so you're going to take a bus all the way up there? <laughs> Fuck it, I'll give you a ride. Right. Oof. Oof. Jesus, Joseph, and Mary. That's it great. was such a different fucking game. Yeah. And I would always take the midnight shift because they would hire you immediately. Right. If you told them 4 to 12, everybody wanted 4 to yeah. 12. Midnight. If you told them 8 to 4, everybody wanted 8 to 4. But you walk in there and go, I want the midnight shift. Are you serious? Right. You know, one of the jobs I had was uh, a, a, a hardware company who I had worked for before. I can't remember the name. They, they were big at that time. And their catch was you worked... 10 hours a night, Monday through Thursday, and then Friday, you came in, you punched in at 7, and at 8 o'clock, you punched out and you went home. It was the craziest job I ever had, and nobody would take that job. I got that job. Like, that was a tight... It was a, a hardware company, and you first started as a warehouse guy. Right. And then, after time, you get promoted to different departments. Do you follow me? So you get the product, you get promoted to shipping. Right. So wait, was your boss just the control freak? Why were you can, coming in for one hour for, on Fridays? Because Friday, like during the week, you each had a a lot. So I, there would be four bays, okay? Uh huh. And there'd be four trucks when you got there, and me, you, Lee, and uh, Jerry Rocha. All right. We all worked together, and we each had a bay, and we get there, and we go all right. This is what we're gonna do. I got three trucks tonight in this bay. You got three trucks. Lee's got two trucks, and Jerry's got two trucks. What we're going to do is this. We can either work alone, or we can work together and get out of here two hours earlier uh-huh. and still get two hours of overtime. These guys were slick. Mm-hmm. And they would jump on those fucking trucks, and they would load three quarters of them. Then we'd have lunch sweaty, dirty, yeah. dust in your eyes from walking in the fucking... Then you come back, and we get there at 7... And we had it down to walking out of there at four in the morning every night. That's how we did it, that mm-hmm. job. And then on Friday nights, you just, that's, the, on Friday, you would go in and they'd have four trucks. Uh-huh. That's it. And each truck had four things on it, mm-hmm. like a curtain rod, a bar of soap, a box of nails, and a right. fucking shower curtain. And that was it. And so you punch out at a quarter to eight. And nobody wanted that job. I right. took that fucking job. <laughs> right. Because I thought it was easy measy. You're yeah. Out, you're out. You're still out on Friday night. Right. You can still watch Miami Vice at nine. Right. And Very be important. out at ten thirty, ready to rock. Lee, you're going through changes, aren't you? <laughs> I'm going through I'm going through changes. It's fucking Monday night, yeah. Lisa. Yeah. Look oh, look at you. See you didn't train all weekend. I, I you got Monday night is the new Sunday afternoon. Yeah, Lee's done. He's done now Monday because he doesn't want to train. He doesn't want to fight. Yeah, why didn't doesn't... you train today? What happened? Lee, go buy the forty and buy the mule. Take a mule home. We'll give you a little bit of this weed with no name on the what, canister. Uh, what's a mule? <laughs> This fucking bong right here. That's the mule. Oh, okay. I Go didn't... buy a mule. You know where? Over there on the Lancashire. Dude, my lungs are already like halfway to like transplant. I'm like, I'm not even like, perfect. Already... You're only 28. That means you're gonna transplant when you're, you're 56. Be the only thing that can happen is you can't run, which you're not running no more anyway. So who gives? I know, a but fuck? I want to have the option to at some point. Nah, there's no yeah. listen. If you're not gonna run now, you're not gonna run later. That's probably yeah. true. Today's but the last me. day to run. Yeah, today's you the know. last day to run. You had your chances. <laughs> You had your chance. You didn't run. Sucking. You were supposed to run. You didn't run. Never so, ran. dog, last week I had a horrible fucking experience. Oh, yeah. That couldn't happen. And this is fucked up because I got to tell you some guys something. The hypnotism worked. Okay. That shit that I've been doing, like tomorrow I got to go 10, 15. I think tomorrow's my last session. If that would have happened 10 years ago, oh, my God. I'm 
I sit there the last two days. Last night I sat on the couch and I go, I can't believe I survived that. Wednesday, I wake up at fucking six in the morning. No coffee, water, Listerine, and toothbrush. I take a shower and I shoot down the Hollywood whatever, uh -huh. UCLA. I see my doctor. He puts a finger up my ass. He does the EKG. Uh-huh. And then we're talking, and I give him a doctor's note, like the asshole that I am. I went to see the other doctor two weeks ago. And I told him that I know I'm getting something wrong with my right and left leg. I knew what it was. It was like minor arthritis. Uh -huh. And he did x-rays, and he goes, you're right. It's just minor arthritis. There's nothing really I can do. You know, just take a leave and stuff and lay off it, change mm. your habits, start swimming, do the elliptical. Right. Get new orthotics. He's like, do all this shit, and this pain will go away. So I go, listen, man, you gave me a test about a year ago to see if I had rheumatoid arthritis, and I never went down there. He goes, well, I'll give you another blood test thing. So he gives it to me like a doctor's note, and I put it in my wallet. And 10 years ago, I wouldn't have given that note to the doctor. I would have ripped that up like I did the first one. Right. But give it to the doctor. He was going to do a blood test anyway. Yeah. I figured they would just take the same blood amount. No, my God. No, thanks, man. And I had to take an HIV test. Uh-huh. I just took one. Yeah. I don't fucking, have it. No, no, no. The, 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 the insurance company wanted me to take an HIV uh, test. Oh, okay. So I take the HIV test. Let me tell you something. I take the blood test, and I have Oye Komovan. That's my shit. Uh -huh. I take an, an iPod, and I just right. blast Oye Komovan. Uh-huh. I had to play it like twice this time, so I knew they took out blood. I didn't uh, faint. Yeah. Usually I start to squirm, my body. Yeah. I was just thinking with my eyeballs up doing the halalu, whatever she yeah. taught me and shit. And I thought I counted backwards and saw myself walking down steps, and every step I get more relaxed. And that's all I thought about, and boom, also I felt the needle go and she put my arm up, but when I went to get up to get my keys and shit, it was like nine <laughs> tubes of blood. Usually I would have dropped to the fucking floor right there. You puked and fainted. Nothing. And... No, I didn't even turn colors. Yeah. I just walked out of there. Okay. Ooh. Wednesday night I come here, we do a podcast. I go home, I sleep like a king, I get up Thursday morning. I got to do a bunch of shit. I got to go to jiu-jitsu. I got a spot at the comedy store. I'm talking to my wife. There's a piece of toast. She I had a piece of egg with one piece of toast. Okay. And it was like a little piece of toast, and I picked it up. And I'm talking to her about the weather or whatever the fuck we're talking about. And I yeah. stepped down where I have the water cooler. And at the same time, I bit my tongue. Uh huh. I got my robe on. My robe is blue. Uh huh. I go, I sit down, I look at it, there's no blood. Then something happens. I look at my finger and there's blood on my finger. Okay. I go, Jesus Christ. Now I'm still typing, I'm writing, but every five or six minutes, I got to write blood out of my mouth on my robe. Okay. My robe has got chunks of red on it. And oh, by this no. time, 10 years ago, I would have fainted. Right. Right? So finally, I put hot water on it. I put fucking salt on it. Yeah. I put an ice cube to it, and it slows it down. My wife's yelling and screaming. I go to St. Joe's, ba ba da ba ba da ba ba They can't fix it. They put some stuff on it. It stops yeah. the bleeding temporary. Okay. But every three minutes, I can taste the blood. Yeah. And I'm checking it. Right? Okay. I go home, boom, we go to the fucking farmer's market. What's that thing? The food trucks. Yeah. We're running the baby. The pedophile's there. I hadn't seen him since last season. He's there with the bubbles. Which one's that? The, oh, a, Michael Jackson? No, this bubble pedophile. That oh. was at North Hollywood Park. Yeah. He has a bicycle. And dog, he now. He has only, a bicycle now? Oh, that's what he's he always had. had a bicycle. Oh, I don't know. Um, and he, again, he only had like five kids, so he got pissed off and he went to the other side of the park. There was more. He's such a pedophile, but he's such a loser. Local pedophile? Yeah. So while I'm sitting there talking to my wife and playing with Mercy, I ate a, I ate that. Me and my wife split a cheesesteak. Yeah. Oh. And while I was eating the cheesesteak, bro, I look at the bread, and it's fucking blood. Bread. And I'm like, oh, my God. It's like God. the French dip place. I run to, yeah, it is like French dip. I run over, I get a bunch of napkins. This thing's on fire. God damn. That's terrible. I go home. This thing's leaking bad. And it's going. It's gushing, guys. It's coming down my fucking chin. I can feel on the collagulating on the inside of my lip. I have a gap over here. The blood was becoming a tooth in there. Uh, like I had to take a toothbrush yeah. and wash it. And chunks of blood were falling out uh, from the top of the ceiling of my mouth 
there was coagulations of blood. I figured, let me eat some edibles. Yeah, sure. And I'll, I'll put them fucking sleep apnea mask on. Chew them slow. And the air from the sleep apnea will blow on the tongue and it'll slow the blood down and eventually it'll harden up into a scab. Right, right. Guys, I lay on my back. I'm on my back for maybe 30 minutes. I go to turn on my fucking left side and I could feel the warmth on my face. Oh, my God. Finally, I'm trying to fucking just, you know me, dog. I'm Johnny yeah. Commando. I got to go yeah. to Utah in the morning. Right. This will stop bleeding by the time I take the flight. <laughs> right. My wife wakes me up and says, Joey, you're gurgling. Get up. Get up. Or I'll oh, my God. One. You're going to go Jimmy Hendrix. And get an ambulance. You have to go to the hospital. Oh, my God, yeah. guys. I'm freaking out. Yeah. I get up. I put on the light. I take the sleep apnea mask off. And three ounces of blood just oh, falls no. on my leg. Oh all my over god, the are you bed. serious? Oh my god, my wife is freaking out. Joe, you, you're gonna bleed out. You're gonna bleed out. I drive myself to the hospital the whole time. I'm taking shits because I'm drinking the blood. I got diarrhea. Oh my god, I'm bleeding. I got tissue. They take me back there. My blood pressure is 225 over fucking oh 400. God. They give me a blood pressure pill. And the guy comes back and he goes, listen, we can't do nothing to stop the bleed until like 3, 3.30. I go, so I'm just going to bleed to death here for fucking four hours. That's what you're trying to fucking tell me. He goes, yeah. I said, fuck you guys. I thanked him and I went home and I put an ice cube on and I put the mask on. And I slept for three hours when I woke up, guys. It had coagulated all over my neck. Oh, the yeah. pillow, it was, if you touch the pillow, it would go... Like yeah, blood yeah, would yeah, come yeah. out of it. It was a guys. Oh, it, was, dude. it was not good. It's like the shining over there. I put. The, I went in the shower and I spit and brushed my teeth for maybe fifteen minutes. Getting all it was a uh, guys. It was terrible. My wife's begging me to go back to the hospital. Listen, guys. I, I'm not. I, you know, I'm not the person I used to be. I got four shows. I got an option. I can milk yeah. this shit. It's Utah. I can't push the shows to Sunday. Right. Right. Miami, you could push the shows to Sunday. Yeah, they're going to show up on Sunday anyway. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But you can't push the Friday shows in Utah to Sunday. My only option was to call Joe Rogan and switch weekends with him. Yeah. That was my only fucking option. Right. And Which didn't make sense at that point either. So I said, fuck it, let me get on the plane. This guy's a great guy. These people are driving from all over. I got on the plane with Diagostino. My, I, I, bro, they didn't look at my, I hid from TSA. The whole time to TSA, I didn't say two fucking words. Mm -hmm. And I could feel it coagulating in my upper lip. I was starting to become Fredo. Yeah. My upper lip was swelling and shit. You're smart. And I walked through security, and I remember going to that waste basket and spitting. And it was just about an ounce of blood, and I'm going, oh my God, when am I gonna get dizzy here? Right. I had paper towels all over me, bundles of tissue, gauze. It was all over my face. My lips at that point were beat red like the Joker. Yeah. <laughs> oh my like God. they had been bloody all night. They were soaking yeah. in blood. Just telling you guys, this is giving me fucking Aja. I got on the plane. I'm sitting there, guys. And, and what's, I'm, 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 it's, it's unbelievable that our flight. I get off the fucking plane, I go to urgent care, and the guy puts cocaine liquid on my tongue. Really? Yeah, to shrink something. I'm starting to faint now. I gotta open up the door. Hold on. Dude, that's a good cliffhanger. Cocaine was just introduced. Oh, my God. I, I didn't know they had liquid cocaine to stop that. It was interesting, because I had a uh, piece of my tongue. Like I don't even know what it was. And I've had it for a few years, and when I first got it, I wanted to just bite it off or like cut it off with a knife because it wasn't yeah. that thick. Uh huh. So I thought I could do it, and I told my the dentist who did it for me. And he's like, yeah, "If you did that, you would have ended up in the emergency room, right? Because the tongue is like one of like the bloodiest. It things. doesn't clot easy, huh? And there's a lot of blood in it, a lot of capillaries. It just yeah, I don't know, I don't know the the uh, reason behind it, but he used a laser, and I was trying to get Joe to go, but he wasn't open until eleven. Right. Oh my god. Just thinking about it. I don't play, the blood. I don't know how you dealt with all that blood. That's crazy. And so, so, did it stop it as soon as you put that medicine on it? He put the liquid on it, and it held a little bit, and then he put a piece of silver on top of it. Silver. <sighs> 
You want to come back to the story later? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> to I, be continued, folks. Yeah, when I'm high on THC. It puts me a... Hey, I see the face mechanism right there. <laughs> that means I'm either going to get seasick <laughs> oh, shit. or I'm going to pass the fuck out oh. telling the story. That's how fucked up it was. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, I'm excited that you're going to Milwaukee. This is going to be fun, man. I haven't been there in a long fucking time. I was there about two years ago. Always loved going to Milwaukee. Uh, every gig I played, I fucking love Milwaukee. The first time I went to Milwaukee, I went there, the weirdest thing to do, Market University. Like, who the fuck in those days? Yeah. And it was a horror show. Uh-huh. But I didn't, wasn't the only one that bombed. Well, that always feels a little bit better. <sighs> so Everybody how, doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing good. <laughs> so, so when did you get back from New York? When did I get back from New York? Me? Yeah, because you went, you went a couple uh, times. I was back um, the middle of April. I was back. Middle of <laughs> April, okay. What, what, how do you like that? Because it... When I when I was growing up, I was always a dream to live in New York. Like, how do you like? It's really cool, man. It's easy to get around, and um, there's always something good to eat. Do Uber always. or do Uber? Or do no subway. way, no way. Subway, come on. Yeah, it's it's not even a thing you even think about. You just do. It's just part of it. Do you take the bus? I'm, I've taken the bus before. Uh, again, I think the audience is suffering without Joey. I think they come here for Joey, and I think we're really fucking milking this shit. Oh, I know, but we're <laughs> to conclude, to... New York City is easy to get around with and a great place to live. I highly recommend it. It's amazing. I feel sick all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told that story so well, it actually smells like New York in here. 